The Federal Communications Commission has determined the following content to be emotionally harmful. Funny things that you think's funny aren't funny. Give me cocks all the time. I want cocks all over me. The Alan Cox Show kicks ass, man. Welcome. Welcome. Show me what you got. You're not going to see a lot of cocks on TV. Alan Cox from the Alan Cox Show. I don't know what it's about you, but I can't even stand your I think you're the biggest asshole alive. It's going to be a great show. Let's kick it. I'll say kick it, and you'll just kick it with a tasty groove, okay? One, two, three, kick it. Kick it, come on. God damn it, could you one time kick it? What the f***? Alan Cox. Here we go, he'll ad-lib, he'll be fine. It's the Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. What's going on, gang? Good afternoon. Hi there. What's up? What's up? My name's Alan Cox. Thanks for being here. Welcome. Say hi to Bill Squire. He's right over there. Hey, could be good. Mary Santora's in Midtown Manhattan. Yo. Does your studio have a letter number on it? Do you know? Uh, have you ever looked when you walked in? A letter number? Sorry. <laughs> a letter. A, yeah, a letter number. <laughs> a letter designation. Mm-hmm. We're in Studio C. All of our studios have letter designations that, to the best of my knowledge, doesn't really indicate anything other than... There's nothing listed. Oh, There's yeah? A piece of paper mm-hmm. taped to the door that says, Reserved for Mary Santor. Hey, I like that. Now, is it handwritten or is it printed out? It is printed out. That's great. You've gotten yourself to print out signed status. Yes. First couple of days, it was probably crudely hand-drawn, right? No, it's the same one that's been there the whole time, though. Ah. Maybe I'll get a plaque soon. I don't know. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, hey, if uh, you want to join us today, please, we'd love to have you. 216-578-1007. Well, I assume we'd like to have you. Um, but why not find out? 800-348-1007. If you're listening on iHeartRadio, you can uh, drop messages for us there. You can text if you like. That number is 35192. Everybody talking about O.J. Simpson dying. I guess I had forgotten that he had been, uh, uh, when that news first broke this morning, I thought that maybe it had come out of nowhere, but I guess I forgot that uh, earlier in the year he had announced that he had uh, prostate cancer. And uh, boy, no quarter given for OJ. That's when you really, you know, all of the uh, all of the outlets and the media sources that up until then had kind of played, you know, pretty close to the vest with OJ. Either they would ignore him or, you know, uh, but all of the headlines today, like the headline of the Drudge Report, was cancer murders OJ. They're not playing around because, uh, sure, the guy was acquitted of double murder, but nobody really believes that he didn't do it. Well, because then and he was so, also convicted of the civil in the civil trial. So civil trial, mm-hmm. and he did some time because of that whole sports memorabilia thing. But you know, you can uh, being convicted in the civil trial, and, and even years later, if you have watched any of the documentaries on the OJ trial where a number of jurors, you know, uh, plenty of whom would go on to write books, but a number of jurors, because I guess they figured that enough time had elapsed where they could come clean, and they said, yes, uh, we came to that decision as payback for the Rodney King verdict. So it really had nothing to do at all. Uh, O.J. Simpson spent a lot of money on uh, his legal team at that time. Uh, They called him the dream team because he had the most high-profile lawyers money could buy. He had, most of them are dead, by the way. Johnny Cochran's dead. Robert Kardashian is dead. F. Lee Bailey, who I think came on, I think Johnny Cochran was initially uh, hired by O.J. Simpson, but I think they brought in F. Lee, this guy, F. Lee Bailey, who, I mean, of course he's dead. I think the guy was like 80 when 30 years ago, but uh, one of the, uh, regarded as one of the most tenacious and brilliant litigators of, Of his time, I remember my father, when I was younger, young kid, he was reading a book by F. Lee Bailey. And, of course, I was a little kid, so I asked him who Flea Bailey was. And, uh, of course, uh, my father chuckled and looked down and tousled my hair and then said, Get the hell out of here and do not interrupt my book again. And I learned a lot that day because... um, I felt it brought us closer together. Effley Bailey only died a couple of years ago. 
Uh, but he was also the guy, as a much younger man, I think he first came to prominence, a little local flavor for F. Lee Bailey. He was the defense attorney for Sam Shepard. The fugitive, the guy out there in Rocky River Bay Village who was accused of uh, Dr. Richard Kimball in the movie, mm -hmm. but it was Sam Shepard and F. Lee Bailey who had been living in Rocky River in the 60s. Uh, he hired them to appeal Sam Shepard's guilty verdict. They argued it before the Supreme Court. He argued that Sam Shepard had been denied due process, uh, due process and on uh, appeal, he got a not guilty verdict, and then, of course, uh, Harrison Ford would play him in the film, and they had a TV show and the whole thing. But Such um, a good movie. Oh, The it Fugitive? Yeah, it's so good. Andrew Davis, great director. I don't know if, uh, what happened to that guy. He had a good run of movies. He had Under Siege uh, with Seagal, and he had The Fugitive and blah, blah, blah. But, um, yeah, Cancer Murders OJ. What did uh, Brad Williams, the comedian, what did he post? That was a good one. Uh, he he can OJ can finally rest in peace knowing that his wife's murderer is dead. <laughs> People so, do not care. They, no, everybody's no got the right. They? <laughs> exactly. I know, I Nor should they. Like, immediately. Yeah. The, uh, Blake Hammond, who's been on the show, he tweeted. He was like, um, heard that cancer is re re heard that cancer is releasing a book called If I Did It. Dot dot dot. My my buddy, I put this on my Instagram story, and it's uh. From my buddy AJ, it says uh, a live shot of cancer fleeing from police after being named a suspect in the death of OJ Simpson. Yeah. And it's the white Bronco. Yeah. A lot of funny jokes. So everybody's making the jokes, but yeah. he did kill two people, and you know, obviously they go to Ron that Goldman. Know of. Uh, they go to Ron Goldman's uh, uh, father. Was Ron Gold? Ron Goldman's the guy that he killed yeah. allegedly. Yeah. The father is whom? Uh, uh, Mr. Goldman. Uh, anyway, he was like, "There's no such thing as closure. This just reminds me that this guy killed my son." And um, and uh, Nicole Simpson, Ron Goldman's. Oh, was his name Ron too? Oh, Fred Goldman. Okay, there you go. See these people. For people old enough to remember, you guys kind of aren't. Mary was real little. Yeah. You were a kid. I was a kid. Yeah. Um, I mean, I was having sex. Sorry, Mary. I was having sex during the Ew. Bronco chase. Now I want you to picture it. Um, I was having sex. I I, I remember it was the afternoon of June seventeenth, nineteen ninety four girl that I hadn't been seeing for very long, redhead, named Gina, taking me to her apartment for a little afternoon delight, breaking news. I Seriously. I, again, Mary, I'm sorry. I'm like mid-stroke when the... Why are you so disgusting? <laughs> it's, uh, it's not disgusting. It's a fact of life. Mm -hmm. It's human nature. Mm -hmm. You know that we have mm -hmm. one purpose mm -hmm. on this planet, mm -hmm. right? And it's mm -hmm. propagation of the species. I, I thought right. it was to gross out Mary. No, that's not the human, that's not Homo sapiens' one purpose. Nevertheless, uh, so that is the, the primary element of the O.J. Simpson saga that is burned in my brain, is having to stop. We were on her couch and, um, and watch this Bronco chase. Um, now, did, it, uh, did I lose uh, my uh, zest for the situation after that? No. Uh, got up. Uh, got Actually, a lemonade. Made you a thousand times more <laughs> erect. A th no. <laughs> oh, now who's being gross? <laughs> a thou Can you imagine a thousand times more erect? I'm no mathematician, but holy cow! You talk I about can now going to see your doctor if it lasts for more than Yow. four hours. Youch! And then the trial famously lasted a couple of years, I believe. But um, you know, Fred Goldman said that uh, O.J.'s death is no great loss. Uh, but there's obviously no such thing as closure. I don't know if those people ever saw a dime from O.J. Simpson. He was, of course, supposed to give them lots and lots of money in that civil trial. I don't know how that uh, played out. But uh, O.J.'s gone and uh, couldn't happen to a nicer guy, I guess. i got to take a break. You want to send me a text, 35192, to get me that way. You can call us if you like. You can listen anywhere on that iHeartRadio app. It's the Alan Cox Show. On our free iHeartRadio app and your favorite smart device. Just tell it to play the Alan Cox Show. On iHeartRadio. Our 2024 iHeartRadio Music Awards. Streaming now on Hulu. Find out what the winners had to say. Ladies and gentlemen. iHeart Innovator Award recipient, Beyonce. Innovation starts with a dream, but then you have to execute that dream, and that role can be very bumpy. Best new artist, Jelly Roll. To be the best new country artist and the best new pop artist. You don't know what this means to a kid like me. 
multi-award winner, SZA. We didn't succumb to the pressure of needing to have the perfect writers, the perfect producers. We just did us. I heart icon, share. From my own experience, if you have a dream and you stick with it, it probably will come true. Artist of the year, Taylor Swift. I heart, you've all just been so incredibly supportive over the course of my entire career, but especially this year has been pretty spectacular. And more, plus iconic performances live on the I heart award stage. Our 2024 iHeartRadio Music Awards. Stream now on Hulu. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor, and Ramp software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now, get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash radio, ramp.com slash radio, R-A-M-P dot com slash radio. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply. The wait is over. The all-new state-of-the-art Spitzer Motor City Jeep Ram is here. We're celebrating our grand opening by giving you more selection. Now shop over 400 new vehicles and get more savings during the Jeep Celebration Event and Ram Truck Month with additional Spitzer discounts, additional factory incentives, and huge trade allowances that you won't find anywhere else. Wag more, spend less during the grand opening of the all-new Spitzer Motor City Jeep Ram. Cleveland's number one dealer. You can use your phone at a doctor's office. You can use your phone at a football game. You can even use your phone at an amusement park. But one place you should never use your phone is behind the wheel. Fines now start at $150. So remember, Ohio, phones down. It's the law. With Spring Black Friday savings at the Home Depot, you can get up to $2,300 off select kitchen packages from top brands like GE Profile. That means you can save on a new GE Profile smart quad door refrigerator that's full of convenient features like a dual dispense autofill pitcher and an ice dispenser with up to 12 and a half pounds capacity. Bring convenience to your kitchen with smart, innovative appliances from GE Profile. Right now, save up to $2,300 on select kitchen packages with Spring Black Friday savings at the Home Depot. How doers get more done.
for flash flooding. I'm Mike Ross in the Traffic Center. This report is sponsored by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care. In celebration of Conrad's 55th anniversary, bundle and save and get up to $325 off for select Goodyear tires. Blue Falls and Conrad's, keeping your car clean and safe on the road. Proud partner of the Cleveland Guardians. Conrad iHeart Podcast update this week on your free iHeart Radio app. NBA DNA with Hannah Storm. Hannah will tell her amazing story in a multi-part podcast series featuring legendary Hall of Famers, current NBA superstars, and basketball media personalities. Games with Names, a sports history podcast on a search to find the greatest games of all time. Choosing Sides F1 Season 2. This season, you'll find out more about all the different pillars that make up this incredible sport, all the details and reasons to become a certain type of F1 fan. Hear these podcasts and more on your free iHeart Radio app or wherever you get your podcasts. If you can't beat them, join them. And if you can't join them, send a strongly worded letter asking why your application was rejected. Another helpful tip from the Alan Cox Show. On 100.7 WMMS. Three five one nine two. Want to send a text? AlanCoxShow.com. Want to watch live? Tom uh, Green is going to join us a little bit later on. He's doing a handful of sold out shows at Hilarities this weekend. Haven't um, caught up with him in a minute. Our buddy Don Jameson is going to be in here tomorrow. He is doing the weekend at the Funny Stop in Cuyahoga Falls. How about those Guardians? Ah, take that crap, sex. They <laughs> end up taking two of three against the White Sox. White Sox blow. A lead last night, um, and uh, they get uh, walked off. 7-6 to six was the final. Uh, Chicago will slink back to the friendly confines of Guaranteed Rate Field, and uh, the Guardians will host the Yankees tomorrow night and Saturday night. Uh, you'll hear all of it here on MMS and on the iHeartRadio app. Big story, of course, out of that game is the Naylor brothers hitting home runs in the same inning. The Naylor on, on National, National Siblings, Siblings Day. Day. Do you ever do posts like that? I know some people no. think they're lame, but, you know, I don't live near my family, and I haven't for a long, long time been on the road doing this radio thing. I just tagged all my siblings in that post about the Naylor brothers hitting home runs, and I was like, none of you losers hit home runs today. Now, do you know that for sure? Yes. Okay. You're able to confirm that um, mm-hmm. individually with them? Mm-hmm. National Siblings Day. Yeah, sometimes I'll have uh, post a little photo. Didn't do that yesterday. Not like they probably even noticed. If anybody was going to do that, it would be me. I imagine Mary uh, made some big uh, post. She did not. Um, uh, my uh, <laughs> my older sister is good for that. My older sister uh-huh. will usually do like a Happy Sisters Day or Brothers Day or Siblings Day. She's always uh, posting posting about the fam. So she's taking care of that end of it. Yes. Yeah. Naylor Brothers hitting home runs, uh, both in the fourth uh, against the White Sox. Chicago. There's a got that. drive, deep center field. It's not coming back all the way into the bullpen. Josh Naylor with his second home run in as many games. Number three on the year, and it gets the Guardians on the board. It's the third home run allowed by Fatty. This is the 19th extra base hit. Did he call him Fatty? What did he call him? Uh, it's not like he called like him Fatty, yeah. Big Fatty. Is that what he called him? Maybe. That's not very nice, boy. What was the pitcher's name? By Fatty. This is the 19th extra base hit. He called him Big Fatty. The third home run allowed by Fatty. (laughs) (laughs) Now, of course, that's the White Sox pitcher that allowed that home run to happen. Uh, Certainly shouldn't call uh, anybody uh, Big Fatty. They have body positivity down there on the field. Center field deep. Fletcher back. On the track, out of room, out of here. Back come the Guardians on one swing of the bat by both. Back on the track, out of out of here. Back on the track, out. What did he say again? Back on. He tried to rhyme it. Back come the Guardians on one swing of the back bat. on the track. Center field deep. Fletcher back on the track, out of room. Fletcher back on, on the, the track. track, out of room, back out of here. The yeah, there you go. Well, the White Sox just found out last season that um, outfielders are a position in baseball. Wow. So, yeah, boy, I'll tell you what. um, You think you have a hard time being a Cleveland Guardians fan. What were they doing before that? Or have over the years. You try being a Chicago White Sox fan. What's that? 
I said, what were they doing before that, using independent fielders? And line drive Peters. Yes, mm -hmm. they had. <laughs> uh-huh. That's right. They were out there. So your Guardians over uh, the White Sox and your Cavaliers win last night as well. That was 110-98 to 98 over the Grizzlies here at home as they go into the last two games of the regular season. And neither team playing tonight. You'll have to leave the Cleveland sports to your Cleveland Monsters who are playing tonight. Don't forget about the Monsters. Every time I leave work, um, and uh, there's always, and I've said this before, but it bears repeating in, in deference to Cleveland Monsters and their fan base, uh, that that's a big draw. A lot of people go to Monsters games. They're a lot of fun. They're not the red-headed stepchild of Cleveland sports. Brian and Blake go to them all the time. She loves them. All the time. I go whenever I they, can. I mean, yeah, They're they good. go probably, I'd say, at least five a season. That's great. They're a good time. And it's it's a, it's such a fast-paced, fun game. And there's always movement. It's it's just fun. There is always movement. Always I like movement. that. You know, maybe you think baseball is too slow. Of course, that kind of makes you a dimwit. But let's just say that you think baseball is too slow. You go, if only I could see something more fast-paced. Cleveland Monsters. Action, there's hitting. Oh, God. Violence. We Get love a goon violence. out there, yeah. sure. A little blood on the ice. Slamming against the glass. Uh -huh. The Laval Rocket are in town. That's a 7 o'clock puck drop tonight at the Romo Fijo. They're coming down all the way from Montreal uh, to play the Cleveland Monsters. You know, Tom Green is Canadian. He'll be in here a little bit later on. Uh, I would love to spend our entire 20-plus minute segment talking about nothing but hockey. But unfortunately, that probably won't be the case. That I'll nice spend. Guy. All, huh? He's a nice guy. He was the first headliner I worked with that my dad was excited about. That made it like, oh, you're actually doing this. Oh, opening for Tom Green. I opened for Tom Green in Toledo. My yeah. dad drove out from Cleveland because that was like the first legitimate, to my dad, the first legitimate comedian I had ever worked now with. Now to you, what was who was the first legitimate comedian you had opened for? I mean, all of them. When you're first starting out, everybody's famous. We're like, oh my god, I can't believe this guy can do 45 minutes. That's the craziest I thing see. I've ever seen. You know? But 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 like famous where people would know who they were, or famous to you because you Actually, were a comedian. Tom Green was. Uh, it was early on in my career. It was probably 2013 or 14. I was only a couple years in, and he was probably the biggest name up until that point. Now, when he's in here, will you tell that story, and then we'll take odds right now on if he pretends to remember. I think he'll remember me. We've worked together like three or four times. Oh, you have? Yeah. But there's been plenty of other comedians I've worked with seven or eight times who don't know who I am. Steve so. Byrne comes to hey, mind. Hey, look at that. My buddy Steve Byrne, who for whatever reason, uh, Mary has not burned herself, if you will, onto his has brain. <laughs> and I think he's just playing around with you. I think he's trolling you. Mm. I think he's having a bit of fun. You know why, Mary? Why? He's a comedian. Interesting. He's a funny man. He's a mirth maker, just like you. A mirth maker. Hey, I've got some bad news, guys, and I know that, um, listen. Oh, I know. I, OJ, OJ came back to life? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, OJ's still dead. Listen, uh, good news, bad news, classic situation. Akibono has died. Of course, longtime frontman for U2. No, Akibono, who is one of the most famous sumo wrestlers in the world. Now, don't sit there and try to tell me that you didn't go through a sumo phase. You didn't go through a sumo Physically. phase? No. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, young man still, 54. That's a young man, Mary, 54 I, years old. Yo, nobody questioned it but you, are. Practically right, so. a pup. Uh, he was uh, a proud Hawaiian. He was a giant in the field of sumo wrestling. Akebono Taro made history when he became the first non-Japanese-born sumo wrestler to take the title, to take the sport's highest title. This is a big, big deal, right? He was practically gaijin. He was 54. Now, I can't, but again, I don't believe everything I read. You tell me that a sumo wrestler died of heart failure. I'm going to say, eh, this guy probably also made some... Enemies, too. Uh, he was born Chadwick Rowan. That is a switch. You thought you had a wild stage name. I mean, you know, he took uh, he took on the mantle of the sumo. 
He was born in Hawaii and moved to Tokyo in the late 80s, and they loved him instantly because he was, you know, he wasn't a native. He was an outsider coming in and doing his thing. He was 6'8", 500 pounds in the prime of his career. Imagine any other, imagine any other aspect of life where you could say, well, in my prime, I was 500 pounds. Only sumo could you say that. Elephants. No, that's not their prime, I guess. What is the prime of an elephant? I don't know. They live a long time, I think. Do they? I know they what never about, forget. Like a tiger. How big are tigers? Are they more than 500 pounds? I mean, they're I not six so feet, eight to- is, inches yeah. tall, though. Tiger. If it st- stands mm, up on its back. Long, yeah. 200 to 680 pounds is a male tiger. But still, what would be what would constitute the animal's prime? Midlife. Midlife. Like so if a it, tiger lives to be 20, yeah, probably 10, 10. Eight, 8 to 12. He goes, man, when I was 10, I was killing the game. You got to do it in tiger years, though. Oh, they probably have some. Man, when I was years. 406, I don't know if it's that. Oh, the African bush elephant can live to be 70 years old. I was surprised. Really, I, if I'm repeating myself, I apologize. But when we went to, we were in Orlando last week. And uh, my wife and my child swam with a dolphin. And they were part of this group. um, And we were, of course, on the beach there and taking pictures or whatever. And there's a little informational session before you go out there because you got to get the wetsuit and the thing. And then they uh, talk to you. Uh, For for that guy, uh, lest he leave another message, by the way, the thing is the rest of the wetsuit, uh, maybe a glove or something like that. Anyway, I asked the lady how long dolphins live because I didn't know. For whatever reason, I had it in my head that dolphins didn't live very long. She said they had dolphins there that were 60 years old. Oh, wow. She goes, I've talked to people who came here. They're all gray. They're old. And wrinkly. Mm -hmm. No, actually, they're they're quite smooth. smooth. Yeah. Yeah. You feel them, and they feel like a hot dog, right? Um, And that's why I have requested from now on... I will only eat 100% dolphin hot dogs. Not dolphin free? No, you want, you dolphin. dolphin hot 100%. <laughs> I want them 0% dolphin free. Alan, you're just ruining, you're ruining nature. Thank you. Do you understand? Thank you. Also, everybody that's ever doing been my in part. the ocean has swam with dolphins, sharks, whales. It's all one water. Yeah, idiot. Well, they held on to the fins, yeah? That's different. So that you get... <laughs> that, um, that's more intimate than the way I've swam with dolphins and whales. Yeah, I don't know that we I've... We were just uh, in the same uh, body of water for a while. Oh, I see. If yeah. they were halfway around, the, halfway around the world, you would have considered that you had swam with dolphins. Right. I it's see. In the same ocean. But same that's ocean. not that's not with. Amongst. Not even amongst. It's halfway with. around the world? It's with. It's the, it's same, the same body ocean. of water. With? It's the same body of water. Huh. How is it not with? Interesting. And all their poop and stuff, too. Okay. So are, like? are 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 we living with with Irish people right now in Dublin? No, it's not the same continent. Separated. Uh-huh. Yeah. Separated. Oh, you mean because it's a body of water? Yeah. Right. All the mm. oceans connect at some point. Okay. All right. I guess I think of with as maybe a, a bit more proximity based. Might be onto something there. Would you like to know other animals that are around? I mean, we all live feet. with each other on Earth, so it's like it's all about perspective. Oh, uh, I'll tell you what, Bill. If only we could get our friends, and enemies to come together and have that perspective, right? We're all trying to live here together. Right. We're all part of this one crazy space marble. What are you talking about, animals? What? I was going to say, it doesn't have to be a tiger. Brown bears weigh 500 pounds and can be up to 10 feet tall in their hind legs. You know this guy's a human, right? I was just Mooses. pointing out. That. <laughs> I should have clarified. Horses. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Camels, buffalo. Yeah, I'm saying if you need a reference for how big this guy was, really big. A, a brown bear on his hind legs. Yeah, six eight, five hundred pounds. Yeah. yeah, that's a brown bear. Yeah. Also, they said this guy very similar to brown bear. Now that you mention it, they also said if you left any food in any tree near this guy, immediately eaten. Digging through garbage cans. Yeah, going at it. Anyway. He died at 54 from heart failure because how can you keep uh, that massive frame going for that long? You really are probably, you know, only as good as your uh, sumo career. But Akibono, who was a big, big deal, he was the first non-Japanese native 
uh, to reach the top of the sumo game. Uh, he has passed away. <laughs> hey, if you want to leave us messages, uh, there's no shortage of ways to do it. You can leave them on the After Hours line. You can drop them on the iHeartRadio app. Got the little talk back button there as well. Hey, Alan. You were talking about the whole Sam Kinison thing and saying that he had a whole Schwarzenegger Stallone thing going with Andrew Dice Clay. I'm not really familiar with what you're talking about as far as the whole Arnold Schwarzenegger thing goes. Would you happen to have any audio of Sylvester Stallone explaining that? <laughs> I was just curious. Shot in the dark. All right, love you. Bye. I I don't know if I According have. According to inside sources. <laughs> I don't know we if got I. It. I don't know if I have any audio from. Uh... Inside sources. No, Perez we're... Bilton making a surprise Thursday appearance. We do have. This is uncovered audio of Sylvester Stallone talking about his rivalry with Arnold Schwarzenegger when they were making movies, action movies in the eighties. Uh, Alan, go ahead and play that. Let me see if I can find it here. Oh, there it is. We just really disliked each other a lot. We, we, he'd be fighting and I'd be fighting. He had this big body. And we, we, we weren't friends. I said, hey, the guy is ugly. And, mm. there you have I think it. that's the only clip I have. There you have yeah, it. Yeah. Right. No, here's Inside another one. Sources. What's that? Here's you have another, another clip? Yeah, here's oh. another one where uh, uh, Sylvester Stallone talks about the rivalry and also talks about how much he likes orange push-ups and fudgicles. Oh, all those. Yeah. Oh, okay. Fudgicles. Me... Fudgicles, Mary. <laughs> Just go play along, all right? Fudgicles. Fudgicles. <laughs> you never heard them called fudgicles? What? Fudgicles. It's a little not to mill house. Let me see if I can <laughs> see if I can find the clip here. Oh, there it is. No, one time it was really hot outside, and I was like, I really go for something cold. And I go, hey, you got any orange push-ups? The guy goes, no. And I go, what about fudgicles? See? He said it, Mary. Yeah, he said it. Did you hear and it? And he also was talking about Arnold Schwarzenegger, remember? Bill was. And he said he didn't like me. <laughs> um, oh, God. Uh... He was just quoting Sylvester Stallone when he said yeah. fudgicles. Yeah. That, that wasn't heard, a Bill Squire thing. That was a, a Sly Stallone thing. thing. That's, thing. Well, it's, it's a, not a, a Simpsons thing, really. Uh, Inside Sources. And here's another uh, clip. Of <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Sylvester Stallone singing the praises of one recently deceased O.J. Simpson as not just a great athlete, but a pretty accomplished comedic actor. See if I can find that. What's that one? Is that one under Sly or OJ? Sly, Sly J. Sly J is. Oh, there it is. Yeah. OJ was doing press for Rambo and OJ Simpson in his cop movie. is a comedy and everything. I thought he was pretty good, but it turns out he murdered people. So I don't know what to think. I like them. They go, but you kill people. Wow, that one kind of—I um, didn't like that one. Pretty on the nose. That one. <laughs> that, that one uh, trailed off there a bit. Of Inside sources. Hmm. Okay, Mary. Well, do you know of any clips? Of t- no, she <laughs> doesn't. Don't, no, don't there's no fudgicles. There's no. No fudgicles. <laughs> Sly and OJ. Oh, see, that's Hollywood, man. Everybody knows everybody, mm-hmm. right? Sly Stallone. He and Arnie, of course. As older men, they're very, very good friends now. But back then, you had to be competitive. Arnie. You don't know him. I'm sorry? You call him Arnie? Well, but they call each other that. Do they? Yeah. You have that on good authority? You well, I mean, I've seen that in things that they've, you know, call it. They call him Arnie. There it is. Okay. Um, Make sure the camera's on. <laughs> we don't want, we I'm don't sorry. Want what? <laughs> For the sure audio. The ca- yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. Because you you have you, to be talking want, when you play that audio. Oh, so you don't want like them you to see me playing that. the audio. Yeah, yeah right, right, right. Here, here's the budget goals. I just emailed it to you. <laughs> oh no, well, I know the reference. I didn't. I, I didn't get the Millhouse fudgicles, I guess. I've never heard a human person that wasn't I don't know seven say that. Right. Funny thing to call them. It's fucking fudgicles. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't feel them. You said there'd be fudgicles, Bart. Where's the fudgicles? 
First, it's Fudge Sickle, and I know they're up here. I just need a better foothold. Hmm. And then All he right. finds Homer's gun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In the vegetable crisper. Yeah. Where the fudgicles? Well, he was, no, he was looking, he was using the vegetable crisper as a foothold so he could get up into the freezer, and then he finds the gun in there, and Homer's like, I put it in a safe place. How was I supposed to know the boy's going to look in the vegetable crisper? Mm -hmm. Did you get all that, Mary? Got it. It's okay, great, good. Great episode. Anyway, R.I.P. to Akebono, uh, who uh, made a literally a spectacle of himself there in the Japanese sumo game. I got to take a break. Uh, I'll have those Tom Segura tickets for you later on. People hitting me up wanting to go. He's doing the Romo Fijo end of September. Want to go to that 21 Pilots show? Get you set up for that. Those two shows are two nights apart, in fact. And uh, as I said, Tom Green's going to join us in here a little bit later on, so we'll catch up with him. 35192. And to text me for anything else, or you can watch live if you like at alancoxshow.com. The Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. And everywhere you go on our free iHeartRadio app. Rover's Morning Glory. The book Unbroken about a POW during World War II. It's a true story. It is a great book. The first couple of chapters are slow. I'm going to warn you. And then after that, I'm telling you, if that's not one of the best books that you've ever read, even Dieter, who hates to read. <laughs> Didn't you read that book, Dieter? Yeah. It took me about and? three years. Rover's <laughs> Morning Glory. Weekdays on 100.7 WMMS and 24-7 on our free iHeartRadio app. Here's what's trending from the iHeart Sports Network, presented by DraftKings Fantasy Sports. Browns running back Nick Chubb has agreed to a restructured...
from iHeartRadio. Portions of the following program were pre-recorded. This is the Buzzard from the Bath Authority Studios. The Buzzard, the home of the Buzzard. The buzzard. This is one hundred point seven WMMS, Cleveland. Call the Alan Cox Show. Pay attention and notice the reverse of everything that is normal becoming abnormal. 216-578-1007 or 1-800-348-1007. It's the same old song. You gotta be somewhere at some time. And they never let you fly. It's like broken. You get cut before you see it. So open up your What is happening with this? Ruining my Dio Sister Sledge mashup. DJ Cummerbund doing it again. Oh, my follower. What's that? My follower. Yeah, your follower, yeah. He called this Stand Up Sisters or something. I like, I forget what he called it. Dio's Stand Up and Shout, of course. Mashed up with Sister Sledge, We Are Family. I love it. Guy can do no wrong as far as I'm concerned. And he follows Bill Squire. Mm-hmm. I wonder if DJ Cummerbund follows me. I wonder if he follows Mary Santora comedy. Probably not. No. Well, I haven't been notified. Mm-hmm. Well, I imagine you probably look. would have. Yeah, I feel like that's something. How do you know if somebody's following you? I just you saw the to notification. Your followers. You what? I went to the notification. I just saw a notification. Go to my so. followers. And then you type in DJ. Hmm. Um. Oh, there's a lot. Of yeah. Whatever. Um. Yeah. Okay. DJ Qualls. He's. <laughs> He's probably in there, too. Is he following you? (laughs) Uh, I don't know about that. Alan, you're talking about Akibono. He wrestled Bill's Inuit sibling, the big show at WrestleMania 21. How do you like that? That's pretty cool. Right? You and the big show. I I don't think we can say Eskimo brothers anymore, so we say uh, Inuit siblings. Ah, the big show. Is he the guy that's running WWE now? Who's the guy that's Triple H. Triple H. Does he go by... Uh, when people... Uh, no, he does not. He, oh, he doesn't do by. that. <laughs> well, I mean, if, were, if you got a message, hey, Triple H is on the phone, you'd be like... <laughs> is, is this... Is this <laughs> I guess the word triple is in his title, though, right? Stands to reason it would be in his Instagram signature. What's his real name? Is it Henry Harvey Higgleston or something like that? You nailed it. Well, I don't know. No, Bill's ex-girlfriend nailed it. With the big show. Paul Levesque. We just hooked up. Oh. We were just hooking up. Mm. Hooked up a few times. Paul Levesque is real big boobs. Sorry, I didn't hear that. Uh, the big show has real big boobs, you no, say? No, the girl that I hooked up with. I'm sorry? She had real big boobs. Oh. Well, that stands to reason, too, right? Mm-hmm. Boobs. Did you get that, Mary? I got it. Real big boobs. And Larry Johnson. Hooked up with Larry Johnson. Yeah. Oh, I remember that. My boyfriend was supposed to pick me up after that shoot, so I called him and I was like, OJ, where are you? And he was like, wait, you're alive? Then who did I kill? (laughs) (laughs) Jenna! Jenna Maroney from 30 Rock. Talking to John Hodgman, of course, in that episode. Uh, Cavs... You're alive, then who did I kill? Then who did I kill? Uh, The Cavs and the Guardians win last night. Cavs over the Grizzlies here at home and right across the street. The um, uh, Guardians over the Chicago White Sox, who are now uh, two and ten. Very exciting to be a fan. Um, Alan, I'm not sure that was Sylvester Stallone. I believe that you've been tricked, man. I hate that. I hate when somebody uh, gets one over on me, uh, provided that it's funny. Uh, that most definitely was not. So um, I don't know. No, that was absolutely 100. percent Sylvester you think Stallone. so? Absolutely. It was. All right. Yeah. I can't reveal my sources, but I know for a fact. Because they're inside. Mm-hmm. That's all we know about your sources. Inside sources. I ain't, I ain't got no outside sources. Mm-hmm. Yeah, inside sources. Hey, Drunk Sue. Hey, baby. Are you okay? I saw you left a couple of uh, voicemails on the after hours line. I was hoping that you weren't yes, in some, I, I was hoping you I weren't in dire straits. You. No, I'm okay, baby. I just wanted to talk to you, and I couldn't get through. Oh, well, that happens sometimes. Yes, I know. What's up? I mean, it rang, but nobody answered. Yeah. Anyways, in the last couple of weeks, um, I had hernia surgery, 
<laughs> that ter- hernia is removed. Wait, 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 wait. I have a feeling I'm going to have to take this piece by piece, if you'll pardon the pun. Hernia surgery, um, I am not, I, I know vaguely what that is. I know there's different kinds of hernias. Is that, where did they go in for that? Right straight down the abdomen, baby. Right straight <laughs> down the abdomen. And, okay, so you have, um, you have like a scar down had, there? Oh, I get the, the stables out tomorrow and the, and the, and the drainage thing out tomorrow. Don't you love modern mm. medicine? All the advancements we've made, and How for are some those things, they, in your brain, Mary. For some things, they so still good. use staples. Love it. I know, right? Yeah, they just go. When I was a little kid, I, I used a stapler and I punched it against my thumb, and the staple went into my thumb, mm-hmm. and then it didn't bleed or nothing. As soon as I pulled that staple out, oh my gosh, that thing bled like a sieve. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was like in kindergarten or first grade or something like that. I just fooling around. I didn't know it was going to happen. Understood. Yeah. Okay, so you have hernia yeah. surgery and you're at home convalescing from that? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I'm good. Um, I had it done on, on Good Friday, which was the 29th. Mm-hmm. And then on not that Saturday because I was in the hospital till Tuesday. And then the Saturday following, I went to go see Floyd Live down mm-hmm. in Minerva. Yep. The Roxy. Oh. Those guys are so good. You had a good time, yeah, though? eight days out of surgery, man. I was down there looking at a concert. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I get the vibe, too, Sue, over the years that we've known you and talked to you, that you have had so many medical procedures that it's old hat to you. You're not sitting around the house uh, with your with your feet up. You're getting back out there and living life. That's right. Yeah. There's not nobody going to tell me how to live. <laughs> Well, she nailed it. Uh, exactly like the, uh, right, don't anybody tell you how to live, because that's not the... That's right. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> so you had surgery, and now you're doing okay? Yeah, I get those stables and stuff out tomorrow. Um, 16 of them, man. Mm-hmm. It was a pretty big slice they took out in the middle of me. Yeah. Uh, how, does, how does one get a hernia? Is that from heavy lifting or pushing too hard on the bowl? Yeah. How does that hit? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. But I don't remember lifting anything that heavy that day. You that know? that day. Well, I don't think it's something that happens well, this, in a this day. Happened on a, it happened a Thursday before. Ah. Good Friday. <laughs> it just like bulged out of my belly like like <laughs> half the size of my fist. You know, and it hurt. <laughs> it, yeah, I'm not going to go. I'm, like, I'm going to tough it out. Sounds like it hurts. Yeah, but you got to be careful, oh. you know. Everybody overplays their I'm going to tough it out hand, and the next thing you know, you've got something that can't be fixed. Yeah, by Friday, I went to the emergency room at 4 o'clock, and I was in the OR at 8. Mm-hmm. Did they say you yeah. should have come to us sooner, or were they happy that you got in at yes, all? Yes, they did. They yeah. chewed me out. I should have been there the day before. <laughs> yeah, and you said, I'm goddamn drunk, Sue. I'm not in here to pussyfoot <laughs> around, right? I'm like, I'm not pussyfooting around. Hell no. Right. Okay. All right. Well, listen. But anyways, that's the update, and everything's going good. I went to see that Floyd Live concert. It was great. Yeah. Where was that? Yeah. That was down in Minerva at the Roxy. Okay. Well, that good. That was so much fun. Okay. They played all the songs you wanted to hear? Yeah. Is well, that, not all of them. Is that where they, they do? They could have played all night, and they wouldn't have played them all. They do some laser lights and stuff? Yes. Yeah. And smoke and all that stuff. All right. Well, you get your staples out tomorrow, Sue? Yeah. Okay. Well, save a couple for me, okay? Oh, sure. All right. Thank you, Sue. Sue, 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 Sue. I might send them to you. Yeah, send them to me. Sue, 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 Sue. Thank you. There's uh, Drunk Sue. He's down there in Canton. Sue. Fine town of Canton, Ohio. Sue. Yeah. I was reading about the uh, country of Chechnya. If hip to Chechnya, this is um, the guy who runs that country is basically like a toady for Putin, right? He was like a Russian general or something, and so they're all in bed together or whatever. But uh, Chechnya, and again, I don't know how you would enforce this, but this is one of those countries that just comes up with stuff and then enforces it. Russia, Chechnya, uh, they have banned uh, music that is either too fast or too slow. Uh, I guess they're running out of things to ban over there in Chechnya. So uh, they are banning music in any genre. 
that is either too fast or too slow. Their Ministry of Culture let people know that uh, all music should be limited to a tempo of between 80 and 116 beats per minute. Borrowing musical culture from other people is inadmissible. Now, if you know anything about uh, Russian music culture, oh, man, is it good. You can't uh, swing a half-eaten cat without running into something good. Remember Edward Keel? Remember that guy? Now, I don't know how many beats per minute this is. I don't know if this would be banned in this current regime. Now, of course, they have the same question I have, which is nobody has any idea why this is happening or how the hell it would be enforced. But uh, Russian media telling people that they have until June 1st to rewrite any <laughs> any music that doesn't uh, conform uh, to 80 to 116 beats for, per minute. Boy, this is really going to put a spear in the heart of the uh, Chechen techno club industry, right? There's right? a lot of songs that would not be able to get played over there. Including Texas Hold'em. Everybody's favorite Beyonce song. Everybody loves Texas Hold'em from Beyonce. It's too fast. Can't play that anymore over there. Texas Hold'em is 110 beats per minute. Which means, too much. nope, it's too fast. You can't play Staying Alive. Imagine a world without Staying Alive. Now. Staying Alive is 104 beats per minute. Can't play that one either. Stairway to Heaven is too fast. Believe it or not. Of course, towards the end there, maybe they'll just play the beginning of Stairway to Heaven. That was always the hardest. If you're a Gen Xer, Stairway to Heaven was always the hardest song to dance to at prom. Because it was a real kind of back and forth slow song for a while. And then it gets going. And up. you don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. That's like uh, Come Sail Away by Styx. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Starts off all slow, and then it gets wild at the end. Yep. Dancing Queen, that's too fast, too. Too fast. 101 beats per minute. So plenty of songs are... All the Chris Brown music, way too many beats. Well, plenty of songs are are too slow. These are songs that are just too fast. But think about the songs that are too slow. Like you can't play... What's the range that we're aiming 80 for? 80 to 116 BPM. 80 to 116. So don't worry, be happy, which obviously I don't think anybody's ever heard this song in Chechnya or Russia. Uh, they go, I've heard this song. I don't know what it means. They don't know what happy. It's there, 69 there's, there's, beats per minute. Their version of the song is, you're happy because you worry. There you go. <laughs> uh, Rehab by Amy Winehouse is too slow. It's 72 beats per minute. I Will Always Love You by Whitney Houston. Oh, it's uh, it's too slow, all these songs. And I... 68 beats per minute. I feel like I used to know somebody that liked that song a lot. I've never. Known. No, I'm not familiar. I mean, this song is so old that I don't know. Is there any bells? The thing is, she was more than just a crack. True, yeah. <laughs> Hotel California, Britney Spears, Toxic. Smells like Teen Spirit, Nirvana. Now, again, these are just examples. I guarantee you none of these songs are getting played anywhere in Chechnya. But let's say, I, I don't know the depth and breadth of, let's say, Taylor Swift's tour plans. I don't think she's doing Chechnya. But she might be doing Moscow. I don't know. I made I played you a couple yesterday of the AI compositions. Oh yeah. I got a couple uh, uh Scott sent me an Alan Cox show AI composition, a song about the show and it was and so I took it upon myself to compose a couple of AI songs for Bill and Mary about them. So Mary's was great. It's so good. It was the ballad, not the ballad of Mary Santora. I took a couple of passes at him, the one that we liked. Uh, was the one that was called um, Double, Double Lunch Lunches. and Goodwill yeah. Finds. Right. <laughs> Double Lunch and Goodwill Finds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I took a so couple perfect. of passes at a Bill Squire song, and I think I might have landed on one. Okay. This I'm is sorry. called Sneakers and Finger Boogers. 
<laughs> All I typed in was, uh, I, t- I think I typed in loves sneakers and his dog, friends with grandma. I think I typed gazebo in there. Uh, so it's called, they called it because they give it a name, sneakers and finger boogers. Bill Squires, got a love for his dog and his sneakers. Rocking like a boss. Grandma's best friend, she's his number one. They stay catching rays, having fun in the sun. He's dyslexic, a little misunderstood. But he's always keeping it real, doing my shit. Casey Bowmaster Boogie with his fingers. Hates paperwork, but his swag lingers. Yeah. Farts his farts, no shame in the game. He keeping it funky, no need to explain. But when the bass drops, he's on the floor. Getting down, showing off those moves galore. Yeah, so farts is farts, gazebo master, boogie with his fingers, hates paperwork, but his swag lingers. This is all very true. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. It's no uh, double lunch and good. No, 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 Mary's is it. But it's it's much better than the original you made me. Yes, the the, um, boobs, trains, and high-end coffee was the first pass. But um, double lunch and goodwill finds is pretty In a small New York town, Mary's on her grind. She's a comedian, make folks laugh all the time. From open mics to late night Now, just, uh, I'll continue this, but who does this sound like, Mary? I mean, this could be anybody. Well, to your ear, you have the refined country music ear. If you were like, oh, this new banger from Fill in the Blank is pretty good. I can't. I mean, it doesn't sound enough it's, like anybody. Okay. Yeah, it's, because it's, it's like basically a, yeah. AI so has taken yeah. all of the it's country too voices. Generic, yeah. Okay. From open mics to late night show, she's got the skill. But when the day's done, she's got her own hillbilly thrill. On hillbilly thrill so much. <laughs> At lunchtime, Mary ain't like the rest. She grabs a double portion. She's always blessed. She stacks the plate high with comfort food. <laughs> so fine, here rock country music playing. It's her kind of dive. Chorus. Double lunch and goodwill finds that's Mary's way. <laughs> Laughter and country music making her day. No fancy stores or expensive taste. That's for sure. She's living high off a double lunch. Thrift store scores. <laughs> so good. Yeah, so. Hmm. That chorus is unbeatable, man. Yeah, it's really, really good. Double lunch and goodwill finds. Yeah, that's Mary's way. I like Play that. Stacked high with comfort food. Yeah, she did, grabs a double portion. She's always blessed. Uh, comfort food so fine. Well, there you go. So. Um, it took another pass at the Bill song. Tried to do an OJ song, but it made him sound too nice. Yeah, because uh, a lot of these generative uh, AI websites, they don't, you know, they block a lot of stuff out. So if your keywords are like murder or boobs or, you know, I, I got boobs into your song, but I wanted to do an X-rated one. It wouldn't do it. I can't. So you'll always have Composed double lunch and goodwill finds. Um, you know, if you want this to be your walk on music from here on I out, like I'm I sure should, you can, yeah. honestly. Mm-hmm. In a small good. New York town. Uh, you don't want your walk on music to overshadow anything you ever do. My walk off music. Yeah, there you that's go. what plays at yeah. the end of the show. There you go. Yeah, yeah, I think that's better. Your walk on music would overshadow you. That song. Uh, that's what Bill is saying. That uh, that that, th- that, that song's song would better o- than anything I've ever written. <laughs> anybody. <laughs> oh, well, anything anybody's yeah. ever written. Well, sure well also when you, you um, uh, if things move forward with this management company, that could be the theme to the TV show. I think that they are. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Bill and I wrote. Uh, obviously, everybody loves Mayor, but they're not going to want anything to do with that because obviously no. that's this show's IP. Exactly. They're going to want they, something. They can't make money off that. Correct. They can buy you it from us. You guys already killed it. They can buy it. Yeah. How much? Have your people talk to my people. Hmm, I'll send an email. Hmm. I sent in a, um, they actually, the manager sent me a voiceover audition for a popular streaming service and I sent in a, uh, Audition for it yesterday. Like the old lady so, role? Yeah. Did I already tell you guys about this? Yeah. Oh, well, I recorded it after work. How did I tell you about it already? Mm-hmm. This is very quick. You did. 
By the way, devotion to accuracy, because I am terrible at math. It's just that I read that thing wrong about that Chechen music band. Some of the songs I was playing were the ones that would fit. So, like, oh. Staying Alive, Stairway to Heaven, those are all within that range. Oh. But the slow ones, like Rehab and I Will Always Love You, and then the fast ones, like, you know, those are ones they are like, no more Nirvana, you know. But, yeah, you're going to get Dancing Queen up the ass for the next, uh, for the foreseeable future there. If you were, and again, we don't have a Chechen bureau chief, uh, but there might be some uh, people of uh, Chechen extraction. Got a lot of Eastern European uh, immigrants in this part of the country, so maybe there's something in there. So, how does Bill know something that you didn't tell him? I don't know. You I'm told like, us I must yesterday have... at the end of the show. You oh, said okay, I don't know relax. if I can talk. About... Well, I'm just saying. You told us. I didn't remember telling you because I yeah. actually recorded it last night. So I didn't remember mentioning that until, well, I sent it in. So maybe we'll all be famous soon, guys. Don't worry. Well, good luck. That would be cool. This bloodthirsty business. Yeah. I'm going to take a break here. One of those Tom Segura tickets. He's doing the Romo Fijo end of September, the Come Together Tour, coming to Cleveland. So if you're a fan, I'll get you those after the break. Anything else, you can shoot me a text, 35192, and we'll be back. This is The Alan Cox Show. Everywhere on our free iHeartRadio app or whatever smart device you have. Just tell it to play The Alan Cox Show on iHeartRadio. Our 2024 iHeartRadio Music Awards. Streaming now on Hulu. Find out what the winners had to say. Ladies and gentlemen. iHeart Innovator Award recipient, Beyonce. Innovation starts with a dream, but then you have to execute that dream, and that role can be very bumpy. Best new artist, Jelly Roll. To be the best new country artist and the best new pop artist, you don't know what this means to a kid like me. Multi-award winner, SZA. You didn't succumb to the pressure of needing to have the perfect writers, the perfect producers, we just did us. I heart icon, share. From my own experience, if you have a dream and you stick with it, it probably will come true. Artist of the year, Taylor Swift. I heart, you've all just been so incredibly supportive over the course of my entire career, but especially this year, it's been pretty spectacular. And more, plus iconic performances live on the I heart award stage. Make some noise! Our 2024 I heart radio music awards. Stream now on Hulu. From the Universal Windows Direct Weather Center, WMMS Weather. There's a flood watch until 2 in the morning. Overnight, showers and thunderstorms down to 45. Rain tomorrow and 49. Sunny Saturday, high 57. Chance of rain again Sunday, high 70. This report is sponsored by Pella Windows and Doors. Refresh your home this spring and give it a whole new look with replacement windows and doors from Pella. Take 50% off installation or pay nothing for 24 months. 877-98-PELLA, PellaCleveland.com. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives. But those points amount to less than they're worth in real cash value. Ramps corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor. And Ramps software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now, get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to Ramp.com slash radio. Ramp.com slash radio. R-A-M-P dot com slash radio. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies candidates with the right skills, sends you great matches, then you can easily invite them to apply. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. See for yourself. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash free to try ZipRecruiter for free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Hey guys, Sansbury here with the weather warming up and the weekend not all that far off. That's when we get the time to ourselves to do what we want. Maybe head out to the lake, pull some fish into the boat. 
And this feels like a perfect opportunity to remind you about the Bush Light Tackle Box Packs. Those are available at your local retailers right now. You can grab them throughout March and April. And those Bush Light Tackle Box Packs featuring four different fish types on those cans. Crappie, catfish, bass, and mahi-mahi too. You can see yourself already, right? Out there on Edgewood Pier, rod in your hand, Bush Light in the other.
I'm going to go see Tom Segura. He's on the road. He's doing arenas on the Come Together Tour. If you're a Tom Segura fan, you're going to get to see him here Thursday night, September the 26th. He's going to do the Romo Fijo. You go straight to TomSegura.com for the details, tickets, info, everything else. Maybe you can't see him here. Maybe you'll have to travel. But if you want to see him in Cleveland, I got two tickets for you. Be caller 10, and you'll go this fall. Good luck. 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. Now we come to a very important section, one that everyone dreads or is embarrassed by or tries to avoid completely. The Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. Three five one nine two. Want to send me a text? Cavs and Guardians, both with wins, both off tonight. Guardians take two of three in that uh, home opener series against the White Sox. Seven to six was the final. Uh, Chicago blows that lead there, so the final uh, score goes to the Guardians, of course, and then they will host the Yankees tomorrow night and Saturday at Progressive Field, and then the uh, Cavaliers. Last two games of the regular season. At the Romo Fijo, Cavs win last night over the Memphis Grizzlies. 110-98 to is the final. Tomorrow night, they'll host the Pacers. And then on Sunday, Charlotte Hornets. Sunday afternoon, we'll wrap up the regular season. as a 1 o'clock tip-off. You'll hear all of it here on MMS. And you can also listen to the games on the iHeartRadio app if you're so inclined. And then it's into playoff basketball. Um, if you watched the beginning of that game last night, you were like, ooh, it doesn't look good. The Cavs were slipping that first half, but um, we made it happen. Boy, I was uh, you want a fascinating story about the triumph of the will, the triumph of the human spirit. This is a woman in East Idaho, an elderly woman in East Idaho, who has someone she knows break into her home in the middle of the night and attack her. And, uh, almo- and, and, and almost kill her. And she emerges victorious from this whole thing. An 85-year-old woman, a woman named Christine Jenahan. It'd be weird to have a, you know, we've, I know we talk about names and it's kind of silly, but um, if you had a Grandma Christine, I mean, that, that's not an old-timey name. Is it too contemporary for a grandmother? I mean, Christine? it's getting up there. I feel like it yeah. might be. I mean... Anyway, Christine Jenahan is 85 years old, and she's at home. She now she like the second Christine. <laughs> she lives with her uh, mentally challenged, her adult disabled son. He's in his room downstairs. He was the only other person in her home. She's awakened in the middle of the night by somebody she knows a 39-year-old guy from one town over who has come to the home to rob her. The cops said this was not a random incident. They knew each other. The guy said, this is always what amazes me, and I guess this is born out of desperation. You know, these people who live near each other in East Idaho, nobody's got a pot to piss in, but they're he's breaking into her home and going, where are your valuables? She's like, I don't have anything, dummy. I'm living in a trailer like you. Or whatever. But it wasn't random. She tried to tell him she didn't have anything of value. But he ties her to a chair. First, he hits her in bed. Wakes her up by hitting her in bed. uh, Because they found blood on her pillow. Which is the next Mary Santora song that's going to happen. No, it is, baby. (laughs) She got the blood on her pillow. Mix it with tears in her heart. Mix it with tears in her heart. (laughs) And um, uh, one of the neighbors from one town over breaks in. Derek Condon, 39 years old, breaks into the house, ties her to a chair. He has got a military jacket on, Natch, and a black ski mask. He's pointing a gun at her and a flashlight at her. She says she was uh, awakened by this guy. First, obviously, she didn't know who it was, but it turns out that she did know who he was. 
He puts her in handcuffs. She's 85, marches her into the living room. This is, um, again, her adult disabled son is downstairs in his room. I take that to mean the basements, and this is all happening on the, the main floor there. But he is either asleep or, or no help whatsoever. So he hits her when she's in bed. There's blood in the pillow, takes her, pulls her into the uh, living room at gunpoint, handcuffs her to a wooden chair, puts the gun to her head, says, where do you keep all your valuables? She's like, I, I, don't, I don't have anything. And she tells him that there's two safes downstairs in another room. So he leaves her handcuffed to the chair, and he's going back and forth trying to get into these safes. Or is it saves? (laughs) Plural of safe. Saves. Saves? (laughs) No. I've got multiple saves in this house. And he's rummaging through the house. So then he realizes that her son is in the home, and he yells at her for not telling him. He thinks it's just him and her. He's screaming at her. He says, I'm going to kill you. And he's pointing the gun and the flashlight at her, and he's got her tied to this wooden chair. So he goes downstairs again. She drags the chair she's tied to into her bedroom. She had a 357 under her pillow. She's 85, and this is East Idaho. She went back into the living room while he's downstairs, scoots the chair back, Hides the gun between the armrest and the cushion of the couch. He's got her tied to a chair next to a couch. Are you picturing all this, Mary? Of course I am. Okay. Because I, I, I won't lie to you, I kind of am too. You have to. Um, and But the woman is dazed, but she has the presence of mind, the wherewithal to get into the room, get the gun, come back. She wants to know what he's going to do next. So she's waiting. And he's rummaging through the house. And she said she ultimately decided it was now or never. He comes back into the room. She pulls the magnum out of the couch, shoots him twice in the chest. (gasps) He's got a 9 millimeter. He returns fire. He hits hits her in the abdomen, leg, Uh. arm, and chest. She takes four rounds. She's an 85-year-old woman. The guy stumbles into the kitchen. He's just taken two 357 shots to the chest. He dies in the kitchen. The woman, still alive and still tied to the chair, sat in the living room for 10 hours because her adult son didn't know what was going on. He's disabled. They don't, they don't describe the, the, uh, you know, the situation there. But 10 hours later, the son comes upstairs and gave her a phone to call 911. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she kills this guy. 85. This woman is beaten and battered and shot four times, and she kills the guy. Good and nobody on the scene is like, yeah, well, now we got to prosecute. They're like, this. if there was any kind of justifiable situation, this is it. He must have been a terrible shot. If she shot him twice and killed and, him and he's hitting her all but over after, the place. You, but yeah, but you're knocked fully back. A three fifty seven yeah, yeah. Magnum yeah. is like a hand yeah, that's cannon. True, that's true, yeah. Yeah. And he's going, pink, 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 pink. You know, he's just, <laughs> yeah. whatever. Uh, they searched the dead guy's body. He had a lockpick set, his car key, a handcuff key, and a bag with the items he had stolen. He was by himself or didn't have a co-conspirator. They said it was truly incredible that this woman survived the encounter. Now, she probably doesn't have much longer. This is one of those things, you know, they talk about how old people who can otherwise be in really good condition... It just takes one domino to fall, and a bunch of other ones will fall. You know, like, a lot of people die from falling at home, which doesn't sound like a big deal, but if your bones are like pretzels and you hit your cranium on the counter, you know, they're like, well, she's alive, and then you're in the hospital for a month and you die. So this, they pulled the four bullets out of her, but she's 85. But what a story. Saves herself, kills the guy. That's why you never know who you're dealing with especially in East Idaho. Man, got to be careful. Stop or my mom will shoot. <laughs> yeah. Estelle Getty style. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Oh. I got to do a quick thing here. Uh, we have a new sponsor. This hour is sponsored by Creamer versus Creamer. Did you get the, did they send you the free samples? The I'm lactose intolerant. No, I got no Creamer versus Creamer samples. Well, but tell us all about it. 
I'll just read what they sent. Still carrying around an uncovered coffee mug like a friggin' troglodyte? That's the copy? I'm just reading it, what they wrote. I'm yeah. just asking. Yeah. yeah that seems yep. uh, aggressive. Well, they get the brand of this show, Bill. You know, that's why they came to me and said, would you care to... And we have a lot of other advertisers that don't seem to get the brand. Then. I keep telling them. Yeah. I know. I keep telling them. Creamer versus Creamer gets it. Uh, uncovered coffee mug. That's an invitation for a disgruntled coworker to pop off in your Java when nobody's looking. Now with Creamer versus Creamer, no more spewing your brew. It's a coffee additive that neutralizes whatever hint of human emission might have been unwittingly added to your beverage. We hear these kinds of stories all the time, right? So this is a direct response to those kinds of stories. Uh, Creamer versus Creamer. I don't know what the website is. They didn't put that in there. Uh, But it said it comes in four great uh, flavors, vanilla, hazelnut, not semen, and mint chocolate. So look into that. I asked them to send you some uh, samples, but I guess they did not. So uh, thank you uh, to Creamer versus Creamer. Have you been creaming in my coffee? I didn't know you drank coffee. I do drink coffee. I know you like, well, not here at work. Fancy I've never, coffee. I do. Yeah. You like fancy coffee. I've never I seen you. I, I, I drink coffee. But not, not uncovered. Not every day. But, I mean, I put a lid on it for sure. No. I, I don't know. Sometimes I leave it in here when I'm maybe going to the bathroom or Mm-mm. something. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> no, but we hear these stories all the time, mm-hmm. right? They're like, oh, this woman, it tasted strange. And so she took it to the whatever. So uh, look for, and thank you. They sponsored this hour of the program, Creamer versus Creamer. And I um, appreciate that very much. Hey, who's this? The CEO of Creamer, Kramer, what, Creamer, Creamer Group? I don't even, I don't really either. Oh, hey, Wilhelmina, I know you. I do remember you. What's up? You used to call me on my cell phone. Remember that song? I don't either. I think so. No, probably not. I don't think I've ever given you my cell phone number. Please don't call me on my cell phone. Where's Kika? Do you even have a cell phone? You. <laughs> That's right. I remember now. Anyway, what's up? I'm doing well. I'm doing really well. Uh, I miss him. His name was, yeah, yeah. His uh, he was uh, not. His name was Pound Cake. Don't worry about it. He's gone. You don't have to worry about it. I'm great. I'm doing well. I'm doing quite well. Yeah. I know you do. <laughs> Are you doing well? No, uh, no problems, no hospital stays or anything like that. So, <laughs> did you get a hernia too? You got two hernias? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do you know what caused them? Can you tell us? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, those hernias caused by putting the her and hernia, right? <laughs> Oh, uh, but you're on the mend now. Mend, mend. Oh, you're dating a lot. What? Oh, how are you meeting these men? Oh, you're very techy these days. <laughs> and uh, well, I'm I'm, ha- I'm happy to hear that you're out there dating. Any uh. Romantic encounters you want to share with us? Don't be too graphic because Mary gets upset. I don't get upset. I just don't like it. (laughs) 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't know that was that's a very specific uh, dating app. So are you both hernia survivors or just you? Okay. <laughs> What's his name? What's what's your uh, whole mate's name? <laughs> Gerard. Gerard. What does Gerard do? <laughs> mm. No, that's a. Uh... <laughs> well, I'm happy to hear that you and Gerard are. Uh, so happy together. You got your. Where'd you guys go on your date? Red Lobster? <laughs> oh, you're there for Shrimp Fest. Hmm. How much did he, how how many shrimp did you eat? Wow. You got your money's worth. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye. Good. Yeah, wow. I've been replaced. Is Mary okay? She's trying to make you jealous, Bill. And no, I'm not. What happened, Bill? I had to step out for a second. Uh, this Who's lady, making Mary jealous? This lady, no, I'm Will not Amin jealous. Wilhelmina. She calls from time to time with uh, different voices sometimes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sounding a little different. She must have got a new Chick-fil-A mobile phone. Uh -huh. uh, but she's dating a guy named Gerard. And they went to Red Lobster. She ate 976 shrimp. Oh, that a sounds lot. made up. Yeah, a lot. And then uh, <laughs> then they they both have hernias, and then they... <laughs> oh, they're boy. They're soulmates. Mm. So. All right. And Mary says that she's just trying to make me jealous. And I don't think it's working. Well, good. Jealousy is a useless emotion. Right. Never fall prey to envy. You know what they say, Mary? Jealousy is swallowing poison and waiting for the other person to die. That's yeah, what they. That's say, what they say. We say, drink the poison to kill another. The proverbial poison. Yes. Alan, I was shot with a three fifty seven. Thankfully, it went through the trunk, back seat, front seat, and was in my chest, just missing my spine and aorta. If it were a headshot, I'd have been splattered all over the windshield. Boy, I want to know more about that story. Oof. That's crazy. Hmm. Alan, make sure you're never treating Bill's coffee like a 2008 Toyota Avalon. No, again, I didn't. Uh, I didn't know that. I don't. I don't think Bill ever has uncovered coffee in here. And I definitely never will. Well, you got nothing to worry about with me. I mean, you and I are the only two in here. Uh, and until 1:30, I'm the only one in here, so I wouldn't worry about that. I've uh, got to take a break. If you want to send me a text, three five one nine two to do that. AlanCoxShow.com. Want to watch live? Want those 21 Pilots tickets? A lot of people hitting me up. When are you giving those away? I'm giving away around 350. So after this break, I will hand those off. You can see them this fall at the Romo Fijo. The Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. And everywhere you go on our free iHeartRadio app. Next week, all bets are on. The Buzzard Bookie returns with nine chances a day every weekday to win $1,000 on 100.7 WMMS. Brought to you by Jersey Mike Subs. Here's my Jersey Mike's radio idea. I'm a ninja warrior. By night, I walk unseen. By day, I'm at Jersey Mike's where they freshly slice my sub just for me. My blade is called Shadow. Theirs is called Meat Slicer.
Jersey Mike's, a sub above. Your afternoon drive is brought to you by the Ken Ganley Auto Group, Ohio's number one automotive retailer. Hey, it's Charlie here for Mr. Rooter. There's nothing worse than a plumbing or drain problem when you don't have a plumber available to fix it. For the past 30 years, people have been trusting Mr. Rooter with their drain and plumbing problems. They offer same-day service no matter where you live, seven days a week. Most people cannot wait two or three days to solve their plumbing issues. That's why I call Mr. Rooter, and right now they're offering a $95 drain cleaning special, but you have to act fast. Call Mr. Rooter today, 855-MISTERS or mrrooter.com slash Cleveland. Start clean with Clorox because Clorox delivers a powerful clean every time because messes happen because hey listen remember how you told me to toss those takeout containers before we left for vacation and you were like i'm serious if that leaks over the counter it'll be a slimy abomination by the time i get back and i was like yeah 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 of course don't worry about it i won't forget <laughs> well oh yeah that happens so start clean with clorox use clorox products as directed rinse
Um, Cavaliers are will play the last two games of the regular season uh, tomorrow night and Sunday against the Pacers and Hornets, respectively. If you are watching this show at alancockshow.com, thank you to Mugly Sunk, Mugly yeah. Sunk Muffin. What? <laughs> you had to take a second there. Mm, I had to take a second. Oh, I, I, there's nothing worse than when someone mispronounces your name. Right. Or misspells it. I love the people who will send me an email that is just my name and then misspell my name in the body of the email. Mm-hmm. It's perfect. It's great. Um, text for Mary. Yes. Oh, Allie and Michael. I, these are two who used to live in Austin. I met them when I had my appearance at Garage Bar out in Willoughby uh, a couple of weeks ago. Where? At the Garage Bar in Willoughby. Oh, I'm going to be there soon. And they wanted to know. Allie and Michael said, hey, we're going to be visiting New York City the 15th through the 19th of April. Oh, my goodness. Any shows Mary's going to be involved with, we'd love to swing by and laugh. Well, that's a little presumptuous. So they're going to be in town next week. Yes. So um, I actually have three shows that Friday the 19th. If they want to come to any of those, I have a 9 p.m. show, an 11 p.m. show, and a 1 a.m. spot. Oh, it's an embarrassment of riches. Look at that on Friday but, the 19th. On Friday the 19th. But next week is pretty open for me as far as stand up goes because I'm doing other things at night next week. I'm doing some podcasts. I'm doing some. But they can't come to those. Stuff. No, but if they want to come, the 19th, I'm at the stand at. Um, I have an 11 o'clock set and a 1 a.m. set, so I'm guessing those are the 10 p.m. and midnight shows. And then I'm at, like, this little bar show at 9. On the I guess it depends side. on how long they want to be out in rage on a Friday night. Correct. But Friday night's the night, so we can cater to you 9, 11, or 1. How late do you want to be out? How much fun are you trying to have? Right. You know? And when are you going to be at Garage Bar, Bill? I'm going to be there April 27th. You can get tickets at BillIsReal.com. Oh, boy. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun doing all different material than I did the last time I was at Garage Bar. So even if you came to that show, you're going to get a completely different set. Wow. All right. Well, there you go. Uh, so Michael and Allie, uh, who are very nice. I think they're from yeah, here, but the, they lived in Austin I for a while. I think they came to my last show in Willoughby. They're very, very uh, great supporters of the show. And so they'll be in uh, Mary's Neck of the Woods next week. Next time you are doing any gigs in Kansas City, by the way, beware. I don't know if uh, uh, this seeps through the ground. I was watching a thing about how the USDA has a billion and a half pounds of cheese Mm -hmm. stashed in caves underneath Kansas City. And almost 400 million pounds of butter. Mary That's being, so lact- <laughs> being lactose intolerant. <laughs> that can't be a real number. <sighs> I, I get. I, I don't. I didn't realize that we were in danger. This stuff's like Fort Knox. I didn't realize that we were in danger of some kind of cheese and butter, some dairy apocalypse, where are they the had cows to. Cows dying or something? Huh? Like, are don't... cows dying off? Everything's dying on this planet, Mary. Haven't Maybe. you heard? I'm living, baby. We are dying. Nope. The animals around us are dying. Nope. We're about I'm to be living. beset on all sides by billions and billions of cicadas. No. The earth is on fire, and we are an empire in decline. But yeah, I don't, agree. don't worry about the cheese and butter. I'm just saying, for somebody who's famously lactose intolerant, next time you might be doing some gigs in and around the Kansas City uh, area, I wonder if you could take tours of this. You know, Missouri well, is the show-me state. What kind of cheese? Because typically, does that matter? Like, yes, because oh. some cheeses have less of the lactose enzyme. Would those be the soft called, cheeses or the hard cheeses? The hard cheeses, oh. and generally they're ones that are like aged longer. They don't have as much lactose in them, so they're not as hard on your on your little tummy. Well, this is all in the service of market stability. You know, the price of milk is always very volatile, and so. Milk production rises in the spring. That's when the cows and the calves are given a lot of milk. And then the school year starts in the fall, and guess what happens? The demand for milk goes way up. 
Biggest milk in school. School sucking milk monster. And so <laughs> uh, my daughter, by the way, was fascinated, not only at Hopkins Airport, but when we landed in Orlando, bookending because both airports have those lactation pods now. Yeah. And she knows what's up. I mean, she knows what that is. But I was like, well, that's, you know, if somebody's going to get on a plane, they want to, you know, squeeze some out or whatever. They got a kid with them. It had been a minute since I, because the last few times we have traveled, we haven't flown. We've either flown out of Detroit or somewhere else. This was actually the first time we were kind of laughing about. We're like, we've traveled quite a bit with our daughter. This is the first time she had ever been in the Cleveland airport because we just don't fly out of Hopkins that often. So the lactation pods, I'm just waiting for some halfwit to file a lawsuit. Why can't I get in there? Well, they're lactation pods, sir. You know how guys... Well, if I identify as lactating. Yeah, you know, well, that's a whole different thing. I'm just saying, you know, these guys that, you know, don't have enough in their favor. They got to sue anytime there's something that's female-oriented. That's discrimination. All right, sir. Fine. You want to sit in the lact sit in the lactation pod? I have been so tired at the airport before that I've thought about going in there and taking a nap. Because they can't prove you're not lactating, they, right? They can't. They can't be like, pull out your breasts and squeeze the milk out. Like, right. they can't do that. I'm a woman. I could go in there and I'd be like, just I'm a pumping. Half hour. Just let me lay in here. I'm so tired. I'm always trying to get hour. my wife to park in expectant mother parking. They don't know that she's not ovulating. They have no idea. No way to check. But it also doesn't mean that you are expecting to become a mother. You can just be an expectant mother, like That's a mother who expects a lot how? <laughs> out of your children. Yeah. That's how My I mother was so expectant of us. <laughs> right. Her expectations couldn't have been higher. Finally, well, they've given her some parking priority. Held us to such a high standard. Yeah. Yeah. But you'll notice, given that example, they don't have similar parking spots for put-upon children. My parents expected a lot out of us. Unfortunately, uh, my other siblings uh, have far outstripped me in uh, in, in accomplishments. But uh, what are you going to do? Where's my parking spot? Not meeting expectations. You have a parking spot. At work? It's not for me. To be a my bad. name isn't on it. Would that make a difference? Mm. I don't know. My name looks pretty good in print. Hmm. Uh, no, it wouldn't really make a difference, no. That's how I was. I was fully, by the way, expecting people to be parked in our reserve spots on the day of the eclipse. I, yeah. Right? Because when I pulled in that morning, the sign fine, was already out that said garage full, mm -hmm. key card access only. That's us. First couple levels there, or first half level, is iHeart reserved parking. I fully expected those to be full because they barely... Enforce, um, enforce that in our building, yeah. Well, probably because it was a daytime game. I don't think they care if the game starts after 4 or 5 o'clock. Well, weekends, it's all bets are off, right? That's I didn't realize I mean. that either. Yeah, like it's a 9 to 5 thing, and then right. the weekends, people, they tell them, hey, park wherever you want. But, yeah. I got another green sticker on my driver's side window a couple of weeks ago because I tried suck, to. Man. Well, I tried to park. I go, wrong? well, I, I tried to pull up. I didn't think I was pulling a fast one. I, I really wasn't intending to do that. I was like, oh, well, I'll try parking another reserve spot with my you know, placard, credential yeah. there and a placard. Thank you. And um, didn't work. Anywho, all of this butter and cheese underneath Kansas City. Now, I don't know whether those spores get into the air, and they might. Uh, all I'm saying is next time you're in Kansas City, I wouldn't want your performance to be inhibited because you were surrounded by milk and cheese spores. Well, it is. It will be. You, you, I mean, know, the I was you know, we saw Mary Santora, and she was sneezing the entire oh. time, and I didn't care for it. The cheese spores! The cheese spores! <laughs> That's right. Ah. We were at the Funny Bone in Kansas City, and Mary Santora was there. But she was sneezing the whole time. Her eyes were watering. I'm not allergic. Huh? <laughs> like, I'm not allergic like that. If anything, I'd be bloated. She was, Man. yeah, but that's less. Bloated and farty. That, that's less visually noticeable. Nobody's going to go, wow, she was bloated. They don't know what you look like. But allergic, if you're I presenting like that way. Vruca salt.
Yes. Do a blueberry. I want an Oompa Loompa mm-hmm. now. Or actually, I'll look like a wheel of cheese. So in the late 40s, the USDA introduced something called the Dairy Product Price Support Program, or the dip up And uh, they have these caves underneath Kansas City. You know, the best cheese comes from caves. Cave cheese, yeah. Cave cheese. Mm -hmm. Cave aged. And so um, it's all underneath there. Now, again, I don't know if they give tours. But, um, you know, this whole program that came up in the late 40s, it ended about a decade back. But they still have all this stored cheese that they use for, like, um, food assistance programs, like WIC and things like that. But, boy, a billion and a half pounds. Would you, if they did a cave tour of this butter cheese cave, but you had to taste the butter at the end? It was Wait, wait, wait. So it's, do I get to have, let me think about this. I have to. You get to see the whole cave, and you get to go on a tour, and they explain it all to you. It's super limited, but you, it is a mandatory butter tasting at the end. Can I determine the amount? All um, I need to do is taste it. It's a, it's a, it's a butter tasting, like yes. a wine tasting. Oh, right? like so a flight of like, butter. So you can, yes. you can swish it around in your mouth, and <sighs> spit it out, spit it back <sighs> out. But they're only giving out a hundred of these tours right. to Think anywhere how in the whole country. Amazing it would be to see the butter cave, Alan. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and you have to taste the butter at the end. Would you do it? Well, can I, again, I, I revert to my initial question. Can I just put a little butter on the tip of a spoon and that can? Yes, that's my tasting? Yes, but four different butters. You have to taste all four. Can I take those tiny amounts of each? Yes. Then yes, of course. Okay. I mean, like cheese. I would. My wife would be. I would just slip it. You know how people um uh, will pass. You gotta on. eat the butter. You can't pass it on to Jim. Okay. To Gwen. No, she you have butter. to taste yeah. it. It's a butter taste. Otherwise, they execute you. Yes. Oh, you don't what? Get to this come jumped out of the up. Cave. This yeah. jumped up a notch. Yeah. Well, it's if, a stupid question. So if you don't do the tasting, <laughs> she can throw anything into it that you want. First of all, this is a brilliant question. If you don't do the tasting, they lock you in the cave, and you become lock you in the cave. Yeah. See, I, wow. I I like butter, but I still just don't think I'd want to go on this tour because I don't think it'd be that interesting to just see. You don't have any idea what's in there. Butter in Four cheese. billion pounds of butter isn't like, wow, that, uh, that's a lot of butter. I'd like to see that. I don't know. Underground, by the way. I mean, it's, butter. it is ridiculous. No one is expecting this to be entertaining because after you take in the sheer breadth of it, you go, oh, and then you go back up topside and you go about your day. But, um... Yes, of course. I don't want to be A, executed, B, locked in a cave in Kansas City. Think of all the barbecue I'd be missing. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, of course. I would take a taste of four different kinds of butters. And you know why? Because what if I stumble onto one I really like? That's what I mean. Yes. Yeah. People are always saying you got to try new things. I don't necessarily believe that. Once you find what you like, Stick to it, live your life. But there's a chance, right? Maybe I just haven't found the right butter. The right butter. butter. Right. Mm-hmm. So just to FYI, with those cheese caves there, uh, there's some weird stuff going on. Maybe there's a tour to be had. I don't know. I got some kids' quotes. It ain't easy being a kid. Now look at what you gone done. Well, speaking of the USDA, it is the end of an era. If they get their way, they are trying to get Lunchables out of public schools. Ooh. Now, I always thought Lunchables were incredibly overrated. Even as a kid, I was like, this is just crappy stuff. I don't think I even had one until a couple of years ago. I tried one. I'm like, oh, food you don't have to refrigerate. Sounds awesome. Um, It turns out, you're never going to believe this, it turns out it may not be the healthiest option. No. But I'll tell you what, this is a fool's errand, and I love every time they do it. This was Michelle Obama's cause celeb, right? When she was the first lady, she was trying to get kids to eat healthier, and they were trying to, and everybody screams and cries that they're trying to force their kids to eat produce or whatever. Oh, tell my kid. Uh, but the USDA is like, there's too much lead, by the way, like you're eating goddamn paint chips, lead and sodium and all kinds of other stuff. They're like, Lunchables should not be on school menus. Now, they're not there because they're healthy. They're there because they're cheap, and that's all that matters with schools. 
what part of it has lead in it? The meat, the crackers, the c- candy, the Capri Sun? Probably like, all which... of it. <laughs> Probably <laughs> all of it. Uh, hmm. Troublingly high levels of lead and sodium. They said, we don't think anybody should be regularly eating these products, and certainly not in schools. So they're trying to get... I don't even remember what kind of Lunchable I had. I know there's a ton of different ones, right? Like, No. Oh, really? There's like six. Oh. There's turkey, ham, bologna, uh, pizza, nachos. I, I think that... I'm not even kidding. I think that might be it. Okay. I can't name another one. I'm Those looking at five. I'm looking at a picture. They have one called Natural, Oscar Mayer Natural, that looks like it's got a couple of triscuits and maybe some cheese that has less crap in it. Turkey that's... and cheddar. There's a thing that looks that's called pizza, but it looks like a stack of tiny crackers with Dude, some. Dude, I love pizza Lunchables. It's like, uh, but none of these are wafer. refrigerated, right? You just pull them no, off a shelf. No, they're refrigerated. They're oh, refrigerated. are they refrigerated. They're really? They're, yeah. yeah. Oh, what are the ones that you pull off the shelf? Like they're so processed, they're not even required to be refrigerated. I've There's never stuff seen like that. that. No. Yeah, I I don't know of any other ones. I might be missing one, but turkey, ham, uh, bologna, pizza, nacho. Okay, and you and had the these on the one. regular as a kid? Oh yeah, but they used to be like ten for ten. Yeah. You used to be able to get, and then after that, the original Lunchable, they started to include the ones with the Capri Sun and the cookie or the uh, candy bar. The, the original Lunchable is just, like, meat, cracker, cheese. That's uh, it. Okay. And then they included, like, the Lunchbox version that had the drink and the dessert in it as well. And mm. those were, like, three bucks. All right. Really splurging on it. Uh, they said that the uh, tests on these Lunchables exceeded, uh, had relatively high levels of lead, sodium, and cadmium. You know, stuff they make batteries with right there in the Lunchables. How Yummy. do you think kids get energy, Alan? <laughs> Uh, you got to plug batteries in, right, Mary? Yes, uh, that's how they get their electricity. Yes. Cadmium, of course, is a human carcinogen. You know, there's people who end up with bone cancer because of cadmium exposure, but throw it in the Lunchables. I'm sure it's a byproduct. I doubt they're making things with cadmium. Yeah, they're not, like, adding it. They're like, oh, <laughs> these are a little short on cadmium. <laughs> uh, it's a very expensive ore, you know. Countries are going to go to war over cadmium mines because of all the cell phone batteries that need to be made. Eric, hello. I know what you're going to say, but go ahead and say it. It was Violet Beauregard who swelled up like a blueberry. Yeah, I oh, knew it as right. soon as I said right. it. Yep. My bad. I should have known that. That was me. <laughs> yeah, I should have I apologize. too. apologize. Thank you, Eric. Violet Beauregard, of course, became the yes. giant blueberry. Veruca, Veruca Salt. Salt was like kicking her feet and screaming, and she was like that. I uh, want it now. I want an oompa loompa now. Yeah. The, she went down the goose egg hole. Right. She's the petulant little British girl. Mm-hmm. Yes. Also in Kids Corner, they are bringing back Yo Gabba Gabba. Remember Yo Gabba Gabba? I never. I know that it was a show. I yeah, I was too old for it, but my older kids loved it, and my I mean the little one now when she was little, she loved Yo Gabba Gabba. My kids watched it a little bit, but they were by the time I came around, they were kind of growing out of it. Yeah, it's just fun though. I mean, adults could watch it, and it felt like a you were kind of tripping balls, but it was, you know, they had uh, DJ Lance Rock. He's not going to be doing it now because I think that guy's like sixty five years old. They've replaced him with a 12-year-old girl. But they're bringing back all of the original Yo Gabba Gabba characters. It's called Yo Gabba Gabba Land, and this is going to be on Apple TV. It will premiere on Friday, August the 9th for people. I know how much people love nostalgia, uh, so it might be worth uh, checking out. Because back in the day, Yo Gabba Gabba, it was on Nickelodeon. Yo Gabba Gabba had DJ Lance Rock, who was the main guy. But, like, Biz Marquee was the sidekick. Remember Biz Marquee was on there? And they had the Aquabats. And they just had, like, these bands. Like, Weezer was on Yo Gabba Gabba. And they'd have My Chemical Romance and these, you know, grown-up bands. But they would play these, you know, pithy little songs. Reggie Watts would be on it. Huh? No, it's live action. But they have, like... they had, like, characters or Muppets or something. It does. Like, giant stuffed characters. But there's people inside them. Broby and Fufa and Tootie and Plex and, yeah. It was kind of fun. I mean, it was, out of all the kids' shows, it was the one you could watch and not feel like an utter moron watching it. But it's been gone for a while. But they're bringing back um, Yo Gabba Gabba to Apple Plus for people who have Hmm. that. I got to take a break here. I will have those Eric Andre tickets for you. Eric Andre show is coming to the world-famous Agora. I don't know what form his show is going to take. 
Uh, but that's for you to find out. June 15th is when that's going to go down. I'll have those tickets for you after the break. It's the Alan Cox Show. Everywhere on our free iHeartRadio app. Or whatever smart device you have. Just tell it to play the Alan Cox Show on iHeartRadio. Our 2024 iHeartRadio Music Awards. Streaming now on Hulu. Find out what the winners had to say. Ladies and gentlemen. iHeart Innovator Award recipient, Beyonce. Innovation starts with a dream, but then you have to execute execute that dream and that role can be very bumpy best new artist jelly roll to be the best new country artist and the best new pop artist you don't know what this means to a kid like me multi-award winner SZA we didn't succumb to the pressure of needing to have the perfect writers the perfect producers we just did us I heart icon share from my own experience if you have a dream and you stick with it it probably will come true artist of the year Taylor Swift I heart you've all just been so incredibly supportive over the course of my entire career, but especially this year, it's been pretty spectacular. And more. Plus, iconic performances live on the iHeart Awards stage. Our 2024 iHeart Radio Music Awards. Stream now on Hulu. From the Mr. Hero. I crave the hero. Weather Center. WMMS Weather. There's a flood watch until 2 in the morning. Overnight, showers and thunderstorms down to 45. Rain tomorrow and 49. Sunny Saturday, high 57. Chance of rain again Sunday, high 70. This report is sponsored by Allstate. You're in good hands. Some people just know there's a better way to do things, like bundling your home and auto insurance with Allstate. Why make things harder than they need to be? There's a better way to save time and money. Visit Allstate.com or call for a quote today. Your afternoon drive is brought to you by the Ken Ganley Auto Group, Ohio's number one automotive retailer. Hey there, it's Alan for Window Nation. I'm the same as you. I see and hear a billion different window company commercials. The reason I tell people to choose Window Nation is because they are all about paying attention to detail, right? They're in your home. They're measuring your windows three times to ensure the proper fit. You go online, you can find out they have a 96% customer satisfaction rating. That means people are saying they do it right the first time. They're not coming back and forth fixing something. Experience. Each installer have average of over 10 years' experience. Windows are all they do, right? You can buy some amazing windows. If they are not installed properly, you are out of luck. That is the secret sauce. So Window Nation out there using top-of-the-line materials. They're made here in Northeast Ohio. They back them with a lifetime warranty. In fact, right now, they will give you two free windows, no limit for every two you buy, and there's no payments for you at all for two years. So go to Window Nation. I've got their windows in Acasa Cox. They are the experts. They look awesome. Never worried about them at all. WindowNation.com to start or call. Give them my name, 866-90-NATION. You can schedule your free in-home estimate today. Lifetime warranty on Window Nation windows, and you can get two free ones for every two you buy and no payments for 24 months. Go to WindowNation.com. Start clean with Clorox because Clorox delivers a powerful clean every time. Because messes happen. Because...
incredible sport. All the details and reasons to become a certain type of F1 fan. Hear these podcasts and more on your free iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. It's time to give stuff away. All right, I want to go see the Eric Andre show. I don't know what form it will take, but he's coming to Cleveland this summer. The Eric Andre show at the world famous Agora. It is Saturday, June the 15th. You can go to agoracleveland.com for all the details, tickets, info, all that. You will get this pair from me right now to see him this summer. A big car 10. Good luck. 216 578 1007 or 800 348 1007. If he sounds super excited to see you... Hey, what's up? Remember, he is a paid performer. As a broadcaster, he's real good. Alan Cox on 100.7 WMMS. you got to like hockey, right? There's a hockey course, game yeah. tonight. Yeah, I grew, I grew up playing hockey, absolutely. In Canada. Yeah, absolutely. The Cleveland Monsters are oh playing tonight against the Laval Rocket. Wow, that's amazing. From Montreal, the yeah. The Monsters. Yeah. Wow, that's incredible. Hey, Tom Green is here. Yeah. Noted Canadian. It's, yep. Have you ever received any kind of Canadian accolades, like as a performer from uh, your let's homeland? Let's see. I was nominated for a Juno Award yeah. when I was a teenager. For, for uh, MC, what was your yeah, name? I was, M- a, I was a rapper, yeah. yeah. Canadian rapper from MC Ottawa. Bones, was yeah, that the... MC yeah. Bones, rocking the microphones like a king on a throne. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, we were... Uh, we were in high school. We were kind of trying to emulate the Beastie Boys and Public Enemy, and yeah. you know, we loved all the hip hop. And I would make all the beats and stuff. That was kind of my first jaunt into this business called show. I show have um, I have an Australian Shepherd whose name is Juno. Nice. And my joke was always people were like, oh, like the movie. And I said, no, after the Canadian Grammy. And they were, of course, yeah. flummoxed. And you've got your dog with you. Absolutely. Tom Charlie. Green's got his dog, Charlie, yeah. here. Yeah. You can follow her on Instagram, Charlie the Pot Cake Dog. Uh, it's C H A R L E Y, like the spelling as in Travels with Charlie, yeah. John Steinbeck's book. Because um, I got her at the beginning of. Uh, the COVID thing, remember uh-huh. that? Oh, yeah. And uh, we took off, took off in a van and uh, we're driving around in the desert in uh, California and Texas and Utah and Arizona and filming stuff for my YouTube channel. You're a you're very much a man of the world now, aren't you? You're uh, kind of you're 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 untethered from anything to which you don't want to be tethered. Well, I I, I am tethered in the sense that I, I mean I don't live in the van. There was some missing. <laughs> There was a little bit of a misperception. No, I when, figure you have a house with yeah. a roof and things. Yeah. yeah, I just moved back to Canada after, after three years ago, almost three years ago. I sold my house in Los Angeles after 20 years, yeah. and I moved back to Canada. I got a farm, and I'm a, I'm a farmer now, yeah. basically. Yeah. I, I just showed you a picture of my mule. I have a mule and a donkey, and I ride my mule around, and, and she's amazing, and it's a really a whole new and uh, What's the mule's awesome name? Uh, Fanny. Her Fanny. name is Fanny. Fanny the mule. Go to Tom Green yeah. on Instagram, and you'll yeah. see these photos, and it's yeah. fascinating. Yeah, it's, it's, I love it. I love being out in nature and, and uh, getting out in the woods and fishing, and my parents live nearby, and so it's good to be home. They're doing good. Mom so. and dad are still alive yep. and they, thriving. Yep. and They, they yeah. still talk to me. Yeah. Even after all the pranks, they still yeah. talk to me. So I thought it would be uh, – it just seemed like the timing was nice to, to – Try to uh, to to leave Los Angeles and go back home and uh, be out uh, near family and uh, out in nature where I like to be. So was it COVID that had precipitated that? I know there were a handful of people that I've talked to that were like, I finally just said this was the push I needed to get the hell out. It was definitely a big catalyst because, like, basically, you know, I've been touring nonstop for the last twenty years yep. doing stand up, and then I, the touring stopped for about a year and a half, and I was just kind of sitting around, you know, my house in L.A. trying to figure out what to do and. Uh, you know, there's a lot of factors that went into it. You know, you know the the real estate market shot through the roof. I was like, I'm going to sell my house. You know? Yeah, right. <laughs> so are, are I, you... I, I kind of timed it right, and I got this nice farm, and uh, and it, it all worked out good. So it was a bunch of different reasons. Plus, uh, I don't think you have to be anywhere anymore. It's a long answer you, to your you question. Don't. No, yeah. no, it's it's totally fine. With the internet and, and everything, you can do you know yeah. anything from anywhere, and that's kind of what I started to realize. And I'm I'm I've got my production company up in Canada. I'm producing a new TV show up there now. I'm. Uh, Directing a documentary and uh, shooting a comedy special, all for Amazon Prime, Prime Video. It's going to be coming out this year, so I'm, I'm kind of busier than ever. I was going to say, for anybody who who goes, oh, Tom Green, you're never not working. I mean, you're always on the road. You're always doing stuff. I mean, yeah. you go back to the Tom Green show, you know, you walked so the jackass guys could run. Yeah, I mean, yeah. back in the yeah, day, you, well. you, if you talk to anybody now about, like, uh, public access, to, they have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. But that or, was or really— just doing internet— 
talk shows or TV. Absolutely, I mean, yeah. What, what you're doing in the early days of the internet with video and in in doing your talk show is basically what everybody ended up emulating in a way. Yeah, it was kind of, uh, there's a documentary that we're putting together right now. It's going to be on Amazon Prime this year. It's going to follow the whole history of the Tom Green show, and it's going to go up to when I started uh, my WebOvision, my mm-hmm. In My House TV show, which became a sort of what sort of a precursor to podcasting mm-hmm. and, and had a lot of uh, uh, fun doing that. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be an interesting documentary. It's going to cover a lot of that stuff. You'll hear Mary Santora in your ears, by the way. She's okay. in Manhattan. Hi, She's worked hey, with Mary. you a number of times. Oh, yeah. She said. Hello, Mary. She How said, you? you're just a delight to work with. All right. Sorry you can't be here. Yeah, that's all right. I just moved out here because, you know, I heard you can do comedy from anywhere. So you I can be anywhere. To <laughs> the Zoom most in. expensive city in the world. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, it really is true, though, and it's, 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 in, it's been interesting. I was, uh, you know, I was thinking about it. I was speaking to some people that I work with, and I was saying, do I think I need to stay in Los Angeles, you know, to keep doing comedy? And they're like, no, you can be anywhere now. And I just yeah. kind of just thought, yeah, let's let's give this a try. And I feel so much better, I mean, just being home. I, no, I'm not saying also, I, why I had not, a great time in L.A. for 20 years. It's not like it was It was not like you were like, I'm sick of this. You no, just wanted, you it just just wanted to change the scenery. just kind of change, you yeah. know. And why not set yourself apart, not only geographically, but, I mean, you've done it in just about every other way. You said mom and dad are still around. Is that you grew up around Ottawa? Is that where yeah. you're from? That, that yeah. So you're back there. I mean, yeah, is it, in the okay. country, outside of the city, there and and uh, yeah, I'm building a podcast studio right now in a barn. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's going to be the first ever solar powered podcast oh. in a barn in Canada. How, now, yeah. how how will people? Um, it, it, are you reclusive by nature? Do you consider yourself along those lines? Uh, I mean, you're going to have people coming in to do the thing. You'll have them zoom in. I mean, uh, no, I, I'm honestly, I probably won't have as many uh, celebrity guests. Yeah. It'll be basically a lot of talking about stuff that I'm doing on the farm and having local people on talking about fishing and, yeah. and hunting and uh, ATV riding and mules and donkeys and and uh, living on the farm and living off grid and building stuff it's going to be kind of a little bit more of a, a broad uh concept and uh, is it a safe assumption that that kind of environment is how you grew up you grew uh, up in an outdoorsy kind I, of thing? i didn't grow up as a farmer uh or on a farm but my we always had this this cottage it was yeah a little little cabin that my parents had when i was a kid so we would go out there every weekend and in the summer in the same area where i live now and my dad would take me fishing and i was yeah. always enjoyed the outdoors and so i don't know at this age i kind of like uh, being able to get up in the morning and step outside and and just see the the, the, the fields and the, the vast expanse and, and of there's the Canadian there, yeah, there's right. bears I mean I I mean it's 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 uh you know I, uh, bears. I yeah <laughs> ba- black bears all over the property I mean I left Los Angeles because I was worried about getting mugged and now I'm gonna go now I'm gonna get eaten <laughs> <laughs> gonna get eaten yeah, yeah. yeah. don't yeah. hang any food from trees yeah. or leave your clothes out yeah. or anything like yeah. that well, I mean, mom and dad were white collar people. Yes, I mean, uh, you know, they they work for they work for. My dad was military. My okay. dad was a uh, Canadian Army. We got an army. Yeah, and uh, and he uh, was sort of a pretty strict uh, military captain upbringing, you know. So, but he's 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 mellowed a lot now. But uh, so it was uh, so professionally that part of that was a rebuttal of all that kind of strict. I think so. Yeah, the, the rejection so. of all that. And, I think yeah, so. I, they yeah. did support me though with my dreams of being a comedian. They they never, um, the, you know, when I started so the my stuff that you did on that show, they seemed to handle it pretty well overall. Yeah, like, yeah. They was, they never were screaming at you or trying to fight you. Like it was it was you know they were shocked a lot of times, but it was yeah. never never like you're not my son or anything right. like it wasn't that. No. freddie got yeah. fingered in real life yeah. no no yeah. there was there was maybe a few moments where it got close to that but yeah. uh <laughs> no they were they were they were i think they kind of thought the show was funny i think you know remember it was this before youtube and before mm-hmm. social yeah. media yeah, before for everything re- really before reality tv and yeah. so like people would see me waking up my parents in the middle of the night or i painted their house yeah. or we painted their car we did all sorts of pranks on them <laughs> that are kind of common types of pranks you see now like yes. you'll see them on tiktok and all over the place but 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 when we did that on public access, you know, we did the show for several years on public access before MTV even heard about it, and people would sort of uh, catch the show and they just sort of couldn't really believe what they were seeing because they, they hadn't seen anything like that. People would say, are those your real parents? People couldn't fathom that they were, that somebody would actually do big pranks like that to their actual parents. So yes. it was a different world. I, I really had a, 
I mean, you guys probably remember, right? But it was like a different reaction back then yeah. to things because it was sort of people hadn't really seen that kind of stuff. So it was it was it was uh, it was a lot of fun. It well, was- it- not only had they not seen it before, they haven't seen it since mm. because everything of a certain. I mean, you and I are about the same age. You're like a month younger than me, literally. Okay, wow. So it's like. Uh, you know, since you look good. The, what the hell did I do? I got to <laughs> stop drinking. You were—I wasn't Lived living that Tom Green life, boy. <laughs> yeah. I was, um, painting houses is hard yeah, work. You absolutely, know? yeah. But it's, um, <laughs> but but for for that for our kind of generation, I mean, even after uh, that that genre that you probably didn't even realize you were spawning, everybody subsequent was kind of like, oh, you're doing Tom Green. There was that thing for a while where, oh, you're doing Tom Green. It's kind of, you know, it's interesting because, like, the reason I don't run around and do pranks anymore, there's a multiple, like, those kind of pranks, there's multiple reasons, I guess. One is is it's it doesn't have the same kind of impact now. Like, you can see this everywhere. You can go on, you know, I woke up this morning, uh, grabbed my phone. Before I was out of bed, I saw, you know, a Karen getting tased. Yeah. You know, right, uh, right. and, and yeah. people screaming at each other and mm. people being flustered and shocked and confused on video. So there's so much... Uh, you know, oversaturation of that, that, you know, it doesn't have the element of surprise. And plus, well, plus and I think as you be... get older, too, I think there's something different about a 28-year-old kid running around being a goof yes. and a 53-year-old guy running around being a goof. But also it has to be, by its very nature, ratcheted up because yeah. so many people are doing it now that it becomes less silly, mm-hmm. which is why your stuff is so funny, mm-hmm. and more there's almost an anger to it, there's a competition to it. Mm-hmm. It's really weird. It's yeah. just It just has a... A lot of it has an uncomfortable vibe. Yeah, I love doing uh, stand up now because it's it's you know the purest form of comedy. I mean, it's a real live performance. And the last fifteen, almost twenty years now, I've been nonstop. I'm shooting my second stand up special now. First one was a Showtime special, and this one's going to be for Amazon Prime. Where and, are you uh, going to shoot that? Well, we're shooting actually all over on this tour right now. Oh, okay. And then I'm also shooting a, a show in Canada that's going to be kind of the main theater show but then we're actually shooting uh tonight at at uh, hilarities, hilarities yeah. and and tomorrow so and you're saturday have a little amalgamation of yeah. all these different and spots co- you've done yeah it's gonna be kind of a seamless yeah. edit it's gonna be a, you know an hour-long special that cuts from city to city i like yeah. that tom yeah. green is at hilarities this weekend i think there are only tickets available for tonight yeah i think all the other ones are sold out exactly yeah so Thank if you, you. want to go see tom green tonight um i mean you could walk up at this point and get tickets tonight but, yeah you know there's a few left a, and uh yeah, it's been cool. Like, like I can drive here. I drove here from my farm. You know, I'm. Uh, we're on this tour. We're driving, so I just jumped yeah. in my pickup truck nice. and crossed the Canadian border. Went to Detroit. Did some shows there. Then we've been in Michigan for the last week, and uh, Indiana and Ohio. And we were here. Now we were in Columbus last night, and. Uh, uh, Cincinnati the night before, and we're just uh, wandering the earth, hitting all the hot spots. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good for you. I'll tell you what, that's you know, the, when people describe leaving and and they're on a farm and whatever, you know, um, obviously there is to us we go, oh, there's something like uh, the American West or whatever. Uh-huh. But also, and I love Canada, I love, you know, Toronto and Vancouver and all that. But that's where my mind usually goes. But it's it it's important to remind people that most of Canada is rural yeah it's yeah. a huge country yeah. it's not as densely populated as down here yeah and so there's plenty of room to you know bob and weave around bears and have a good time oh yeah yeah, yeah. i mean the the it's it's not a western ranch type farm it's more like an eastern farm. It's a lot like the farms you would see here in ohio right here, yeah. when yeah. you're outside the city and you see you know some i got a couple hundred year old barns and i've got a the house was built in 1857 it's an old pioneers log house which mm-hmm. has been refurbished and it's a nice little That's place cool. and i love it there's something very peaceful about that knowing like you just have that spot and you just kind of you know be there in nature and you said you're, you're doing this amazon prime tv show too what are the what's that gonna be well the show is called aspect? tom green country it actually yeah. hasn't been announced yet i'm oh. just i'm just oh. talking about it now because i actually haven't been on a radio show in about three years All either right. hey. so this is exciting thank you, you guys asked me in. to come by so yeah. thank you but uh yeah, I've been, uh, you know, since we're talking about it, it's called Tom Green Country. It's yeah. probably going to, I'm not sure when it's out yet, maybe in the fall. I'm directing and producing it, and uh, and it's uh, kind of a docu-series about my life on the farm. And then there's this uh, stand-up special we're doing, as well as a, a, a feature-length documentary about the Tom Green show and all those crazy years, too, with mm-hmm. going back and looking at all the old pranks and stuff. So Awesome. I love yeah. all of that. How, yeah. have, I, you've probably been asked it a million times, but it's always an interesting question to me because of how... It, it, um, how inward it is. How do you describe your sense of humor? 
Uh, well, you know, I first of all, I, I grew up loving a lot of what you would call traditional comedy. I mean, I grew up loving David Letterman yep. and Saturday Night Live and SCTV and Monty Python. and Which seemed traditional now, but mm-hmm. back then the they time, were very much com- not so. Completely outrageous, yeah. yeah, when I would see Monty Python's Flying Circus on TV every night on, on the CBC in yeah. Canada. And, and you had SCTV up there. Yeah, and, and you'd yeah. just be, and it would play nonstop. It, it, would, it, was, it was, you know, SCTV was... A, a mainstream primetime show. You come home yeah. and be on after school every day. So you sort of grow up with this really kind of uh, absurd comedy being kind of pummeled into your brain. Did you predate Canada. Kids in the Hall? Uh, no, they were. Kind of when I was with... in high school, they were on. Okay. And they were just some of my favorites. And yeah. I got to know all of those guys. And, uh, you know, Bruce McCullough directed two movies that I was in, the Stealing Harvard and the first mm-hmm. time I was in a movie, Superstar. I had a small part in that. <laughs> nice. yeah. So, uh, and, uh, and he's awesome. And then I got to know all the other guys from coming up to my web shows and things, podcasts and stuff over the years. So that was, yeah, that's, that was sort of like, I think, I think in Canada, we did have some shows that were, they were on in the United States, but you know, they were prime time in Canada. Yes. Everybody, when the kids in the hall came on, you know, Everything stopped. You'd come into school the next day. Everybody was talking about the kids yeah. in the hall in Canada. So, so yeah, it was. Uh, so I'm, I was very inspired by by that. I was also inspired a lot by skateboarding videos and uh, just being, you know, out on my skateboard and getting into sort of, uh, you know, wild and crazy interactions with security guards and stuff and kicking right. us out of things. And the idea well, of getting a video camera and filming all that kind of is where I think. It was interesting how those worlds kind of blended together of Mm -hmm. comedy and skateboarding because there was some just silliness that went on with those videos that you'd see the cool tricks, but then you'd see them just do something outrageous just for fun and laugh at that. It was a lot of it was just timing, you know. The timing was I was at that right age when the video cameras and all that stuff was available. Right. But I was doing stand-up when I was 16 years old at Yuck Yucks in Canada, and I was was really into stand-up comedy and... You know, I looked up to people like Robin Williams and Steve Martin, and uh, as I, I got older, I looked back at George Carlin and Richard Pryor yeah. and all the great comedians. So and, there wasn't a point where you were, like, um, just kind of going through all of those uh, different kinds of influences. A lot of times people who are creative or want to be creative in a funny way, they go, well, is stand-up for me or is improv for me? Yeah, yeah. Had you dabbled in both, or were you were like, I'm, I'm kind of a lone wolf, this is what I want to do, stand-up is what it's going to be? Yeah, I st- I just I discovered stand up comedy when I was about sixteen years old. I'd go down to Yuck Yucks, which is still there. It's yeah. How- Howard Wagman and Mark Breslin still run Yuck Yucks up there, and Howard runs the one in Ottawa. And um, there, you know, it, it, when you're sixteen and you discover a stand up comedy bar that you can go to, right. And you start going out to a bar, and it's you know Thursday yeah, night. And, Sounds weird, yeah. And then Norm Macdonald was uh, was who became. Uh, a friend of mine, but was my hero when I was in high school because this was before he was on Saturday Night Live. He was mm-hmm. in his 20s rolling through. He's from Ottawa, where I'm from, too. So he would kind of roll through on tour, and we would all, my friends and I, we kind of felt Star like Search we, back in the day, We right? kind of Nor- felt like we discovered this comedy club. It wasn't like everybody in our high school was going to the comedy club at the time. It was mm-hmm. sort of a new thing. So it was kind of an exciting thing to go down there and discover people like... Norm Macdonald, and then when he went to Saturday Night Live, it was surreal, really, because you know here was this guy from our hometown hosting Weekend Update on Saturday Night Live. We had always sort of seen him as this guy's the most outrageous guy, you know. Mm-hmm, yeah. You know, you'd watch comedy, and it was a lot more down the middle. Uh, you know, every ten years or so, somebody comes along and kind of dismantles what's going on, right? And he was sort of a, a, a disruptor. Right. right, and when we saw him, it was just it was just sort of great. You know, it was, felt like he was. Who do you see us. now? Where you're like, I really like what they're doing. Is there a performer uh, you look at and you're like, I'm 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 really. They don't have to be reminiscent of you. Just somebody I love. That kind uh, of... I really like Shane Gillis a lot. He's okay. amazing, yep. and uh, you know, I have I have. I'm, I've, it's incredible what Joe Rogan's doing. I mean, I go on his. I just went on his podcast and went down to his uh, amazing comedy club, the Comedy Mothership in Austin, and I mean, what he's doing is is really. If you want to talk about disruptive in a in an incredibly interesting way, is he's sort of creating this whole new system for stand up, right? You know, all the comedians uh, it's the able to come show through now. there, and and it really kind of uh, you know really is a launching pad for so many great stand up comedians. So, you know, I but I mean, I I love 
so many great, you know, Tom Segura, Bill yeah, Burr, sure. Theo Vaughn, uh, mm-hmm. uh, all, all, all those guys that are killing it right now. You Burt Kreischer, there's so many so funny people. So <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, He's absolutely. living in the Canadian <laughs> country, <laughs> Bill. Absolutely. It's on brand. I said Richard Pryor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Tom Green is at Hilarities this weekend. You are out of luck if you wanted to see him any night but tonight, but you should go tonight. All the other ones are sold out. Um, hilarities.com for the details. You could walk right around the corner from here and uh, get yourself a ticket. Uh, Tom Green on Instagram. He's got the farm. He's got the mule. Oh, He's yeah, got Charlie the dog. Oh, yeah, bud. Rescued from the Bahamas. Yep. And uh, it sounds like he got a great <laughs> life. Yeah. It God thinks, bless. It's, it's, a, it's, a good, it's a good thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling really uh, happier than I felt in years back at home and uh, enjoying uh, enjoying the solitude of nature when I'm when I'm home and then off on the road I get to – be around amazing people and having incredible sold out shows this yeah. whole tour and people are coming out and having a great time and it's it's I really like you know there's people come to see the show cuz they remember the old stuff from the Tom Green show they rem- some people remember you know come cuz they love Freddy got fingered or road yeah. trip some of the movies and then there's a lot of people that are just excited about the stuff I'm doing on YouTube now and yeah. following along with Fanny and Charlie and so it's it's a really kind of a Really broad group of people that come to the shows, and it's uh, it's it's been great. Do you I, have a Rip Torn story off the top of your head? Yeah, well, I love Rip Torn so yeah. much. He was he was amazing. He was the real deal. Yeah, he played my father in, <laughs> in Freddie Got Fingered, and uh, there was a lot of people up for that role. So I directed that movie. So I met with all and wrote it. So there was, you know, it was a crazy time where you know, major studios were letting me write and direct movies, mm-hmm. and they actually let me make Freddie Got Fingered. <laughs> yes. So uh, somebody was. Uh, uh, you know, not thinking straight, I guess. But uh, yeah, so when that movie was being cast, uh, I sat down with uh, William Shatner, uh, John Voight, and uh, and um, James Woods. Mm-hmm. All wanted to play my father <laughs> and Rip Torn. And any uh, one of them who would have killed it. It was amazing, and yeah. I had it was a really tough choice. And uh, the studio actually really wanted Rip, and I was like, Yeah, okay, yeah, that that's great. I I, I love Rip, and. Is that because his quote was the lowest as far as they were concerned? They were that's probably know. all they cared I don't, about. I don't really know. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, he was on the Larry Sanders show. Yeah. He was in Men in Black. Yep. So he was probably probably doing more relevant movies at the time than, okay. than, than some of those guys. I yeah. don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know what the reason, but you know, it was it was great. I mean, he was great. And uh and you know, we shot the movie in Vancouver, and he was a a, a, a nice man, but he was also sometimes a little bit like the character. He was a fighter. He did not yeah. suffer yeah. fools. Uh, yeah. He was a he was a tough guy. But on the weekends, he would go out and uh, go fishing, and uh, in Vancouver, and he would come back every Monday with a giant salmon, <laughs> and uh, the, we'd cook up this huge salmon for the ca- for the yeah. cast and crew at lunch, and uh, it was feed the whole crew. This thing, these salmon were so big. So he was a good. real man. That he guy. was a real man. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I hope that it's not because it's been a minute since you've been on this show. I hope it's not as long until we see you next time. Yeah. So. No, like I said, like I live in the neighborhood now, so I mean, I really, I uh, I'm going to be doing these uh, driving tours a lot more. I'll be in this part of the country a lot more, so I definitely won't well, be come another... by next time you're around. Yeah, I think yeah. it's been like six years or something. Since it's I was been a there. while. Yeah. So, yeah. So I'll yeah. be back. Good to see you. Thanks, man. Tom Thank Green you. is in Cleveland this weekend. Don't miss him. Get those tickets to see him tonight at Hilarities. Tom Green on Instagram. We'll take a break. 35192. Want to text for anything, and we'll be back. The Alan Cox Show. Where you go on our free iHeartRadio app. This weekend, the buzzard backs up to the 90s. Welcome. You've got 90s. And we're going deep. Even deeper. Is that all you got? If you heard it here in the 90s, you'll hear it here this weekend. I want you to listen to me, and I will say this again. We will not play music from any other decade. It's nothing but the 90s on 100.7 WMMS. Get Spectrum, internet, mobile, and TV. Restrictions apply. Visit Spectrum.com for details. The Bush Guide, cold and smooth survival skills. For a successful stint in the great outdoors, pack accordingly. Place heavy essentials near your spine for stability in rough terrain with light items near the bottom. Now, you may be wondering, where does the bush light go? In your stomach. Bush. Head for the mountains. Enjoy responsibly. Copyright 2024, Anheuser-Busch. Bush Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. 
Greatness doesn't happen overnight. It takes time, focus, and dedication. At Shelter Insurance, we understand that because we put in the hard work and dedication for decades. And that commitment has paid off with award-winning customer service for your auto, home, and life insurance. Visit shelterinsurance.com and find an agent to help you choose the coverage you need. Shelter Insurance. We're your shield. We are your shelter. Mr. Hero's new Bud's Value Menu has everyone craving to try one. And what if I told you that you can get the bacon cheeseburger Bud for just $1 with any sandwich purchase? I know. Sounds too good to be true. I crave the hero. Hey, it's Alan. Cars for Kids is hands down the quickest, fastest way to get rid of your old car, no matter what shape it's in. So do a good thing without cutting into your schedule at all. Just go to carsforkids.org today. And remember, that's cars with a K. Spring into clean with Coit. Save 30% on everything Coit cleans. And Coit cleans everything. Air ducts, carpet, upholstery, area rugs, blinds and draperies, tile and grout too. Get the confidence of Coit's no-risk guarantee. Plus, join the new Coit Loyal program for free. Get up to $100 in Coit cash to spend and more. For details and 30% savings, call 1-800-4-COIT or online at coit.com. This is your Thursday Sports Minute, brought to you by BetMGM, the king of sports books. In the NBA on this Thursday night in Boston, the Celtics host the New York Knicks. Celtics 62 and 17, best record in the NBA. The Knicks come in 47 and 32. They're in the third spot in the Eastern Conference playoff race, right behind Milwaukee and just ahead of Cleveland. The Celtics, a one and a half point home favorite over the Knicks. The Kings, the eighth seed in the West. Pelicans, the sixth seed in the West. They're trying to hang on and avoid the play-in tournament. The Kings, a one and a half point favorite over under total, 218 and a half. Signature bet, single game parlays build your own parlays lots of ways to take action betmgm is the king of sports books see betmgm.com for terms 21 plus only gambling problem call 1-800-GAMBLER available in the u.s call 8778-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369 new york call 1-800-NEXT-STEP arizona 1-800-327-5050 massachusetts 1-800-BETS-OFF in iowa or visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net west virginia in partnership with kansas crossing casino and hotel Some people just know the best rate for you is a rate based on you with Allstate. Not one based on the driver who treats the highway like a racetrack and the shoulder like a passing lane. Why pay a rate based on anyone else? Get one based on you with DriveWise from Allstate. Not available in Alaska or California. Subject to terms and conditions. Rates are determined by several factors which vary by state. In some states, participation in DriveWise allows Allstate to use your driving data for purposes of rating. While in some states, your rate could increase with high-risk driving. Generally, safer drivers will save with DriveWise. Allstate Fire and Casualty Insurance Company.
All right, Josie Scott, the original frontman of the band Saliva, is taking the boys out again. Josie Scott's Saliva. Oh, catchy name. Tells you everything you need to know. They're coming through with a couple of other bands. Seven Circle Sunrise and Artificial Astronaut. It's going to go down next week. Yeah, the 18th, one week from tonight. At Temple Live in the Asylum Room. Ticketmaster.com has got all the information for you. But I'll get you this pair here for caller 10. Josie Scott fronting Saliva once again. Back where he belongs. 216-578-1007 to win. Or 800-348-1007. Alan Cox. A drummer. Not even a real musician. He just makes a noise. If he played the violin or the piano, anything that made sense but the drums. 100.7 WMMS. How about that Tom Green boy? Ooh, he's such a great guy. He's a sweetheart. He was, as Mary put it, how'd you put it? He was as advertised. Very, very nice. And again, we've talked to him before. It's right. just been a long time. But it would be nice to kind of um, uh, be in a position to shed yourself of all that nonsense you didn't want to contend with anymore and get to see mom and dad and you're out on the farm and, you know, that's what we all want. Is that what we all want to eventually be on a farm? No. After it's all over for us in showbiz, we're all going to retire to a farm somewhere. I mean, no. you can just come back to Berea. I mean, you know, not for Honestly, you. You don't want to end would... up on a farm with a mule? No. no. Oh. Nothing about a farm is appealing to me in any sense. Well, you're not working like the being... farm. You're living on one. It's not a working That's farm. That's what I'm saying. Oh. Like, I don't like the idea of being far away from stuff or people or groceries or coffee or anything. I like the idea of having, like, a cabin I can get away to when I can. But right. in... The, the way my schedule is, I rarely have a weekend where I would be able to do that, so it's easier to just get an Airbnb when I want to get out of well, town. Well, I don't mean that. I, yeah. don't, mean, I don't mean now. But, yeah. But eventually, down the road. I can see myself down the road being in a m- much more rural place for sure. No. Like, I'm, I'm talking late 60s, early 70s. Like, I don't think yeah. I'll ever like that. Why would you want to? Why would you well, want to- listen, I'm 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 absolutely an urban person, but those are usually the people who go. I gotta get out of here and go find some place I can breathe the air and blah blah blah. There's nothing to do. Well, That's you gotta find. You, yeah, you find you things fish, to you do. do nothing, I mean, you fish. Yeah. You, fish. you have the grandkids come out and visit you. I'm not, gonna not gonna have grandkids. <laughs> I mean, that's off the table. It's the fake ones, right? The, ste- the steppies. Fake grandkids. The steppies like step- me. My yeah. step grandma. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Yeah. But you, you, but you don't want to fish. Like your like nieces and nephews, when they have, they're growing up, they have, you know, they go, know. oh, we're going out to Great Aunt Mare's <laughs> uh, no. farm. Why do the kids sound like that? Because they're from Kentucky. <laughs> I do have two nieces from Kentucky. Mm. All right. I uh, opened for Tom Green. This is in Tampa 15, 16 years ago, and that was one of the best weekends doing stand-up I ever had because his crowd was so locked into just seeing anything funny. And mm-hmm. like and, and they were they were like so supportive of him and you can me. play with them. And well they just they just liked great comedy and I sold like three thousand dollars worth of t shirts. Like I had Dang. all like I, I it was when I was driving everywhere and so I drove down to Tampa and I had every shirt that I ever had made and I sold every last one of them and made awesome. so much money so i always uh, appreciate tom for having not just great fans but great fans with deep pockets <laughs> we still invariably at casa cox gwen and i will with some frequency out of nowhere just go daddy would you like some sausage just start yeah. singing it and you know i didn't want to go too deep on the freddy got fingered because you know but there's a video of uh, my buddy Richard Roper, who wrote for the Chicago Sun Times for a long time, and he replaced Gene Siskel on uh, Ebert and Siskel at the movies. Rich Roper replaced, uh, I think, after Gene Siskel died. So it was him and Roger Ebert. And there's a great clip on YouTube of the two of them reviewing Freddie Got Fingered, and they're so angry about it. Mm-hmm. And it just makes were... me laugh so hard, not only watching the movie. But their reaction to it, like they thought 
that the movie rating system itself needed to be changed because Freddie Got Fingered only got an R. I mean, they were <laughs> like, and then they're showing a clip and they're talking. I'm like, I'm howling. I'm like, oh, God, it's so funny. And that's why I wanted a Rip Torn story because Rip Torn played the dad and, you know, and he in real life, Rip Torn was like a hellraiser. This was a guy getting in bar oh, fights when he was like 75 yeah, just, years yeah. old, you know. So. Yeah, I remember, I think it was Alec Baldwin told that story about him getting a, he's like. And on on told, Seinfeld's Comedians and Cars. Yeah, yeah. And, and Seinfeld's like, when was this? He's like. When he was almost dead. <laughs> last summer. <laughs> it's like last, yeah. Oh, God, it's so good. Let me find this. Rich Roper and uh, and Roger Ebert. Does Carrie look like Lawrence Olivier. It's a vomitorium of a movie starring Green as Gord, an obnoxious retard. Who makes his life- <laughs> now, for, don't forget that. <laughs> yeah. How much has changed, right? This would have been, oh, it God, I'd have to so ask him. guard to hear that on the radio. <laughs> right. Roger Ebert calling him that. Yeah. Starring Green as Gord, an obnoxious retard who makes it his life's work to freak out his dad, played with teeth gnashing scorn by Rip Torn. Oh, look, honey, our boy's a genius. He's rigged a pulley system so he can eat sausage and work on his stupid drawings. And being creative? Now, if you'll excuse me, I still have some work to do. Daddy, would you like some sausage? <laughs> Oh, my God. But, yeah, they went on and on about how, like, they need to change the rating system because of this. Oh, it's so good. I love it. Alan, I was in Iraq in 2003, and Tom Green came while my unit was there, and he was awesome. <laughs> he's uh, he's uh, Canadian. He's unfailingly polite, right? Mm. 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 Do his parents still have the slut mobile? Listen, there were a billion so. questions, yeah, that I could have. Uh, but he did bring his rescue dog in. He brought Charlie in. Yeah. He, he had mentioned before he went on the air that she was a rescue from the Bahamas. Right. That's like the only time you can take something from the Bahamas and be like, I'm rescuing it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I rescued some bananas yeah. that had a uh, like, they had a spider in them. that I ended like up... I'd rather be in the Bahamas, but Charlie's better off with Tom than in the Bahamas. Yeah. Although the Bahamas are beautiful. Yeah, I've heard. There's no doubt about it. I've heard that. The Bahamas are beautiful. <laughs> Alan with his controversial thought of the day. Well, no, no, not a hot take, but it's like, it's, it's, you know, when you travel to these places, when we went to Jamaica, mm-hmm. you travel to these places that are objectively gorgeous, but they're also so poverty stricken yeah. that you feel weird enjoying yourself. Well, I do, I guess. And you're and, and you know and people are like no this is great you like you're bringing tourism dollars in that's how those people you know live down there. Show trip show. But trip. you feel weird. Yeah, about prove it. it. We, got, we freed up a bunch hey, of money. Pound cake's got, gone. Yeah, we got one less person to pay for. <laughs> I'm working. <laughs> I, I'm Pound working on a show trip Cody that you're gonna would love. Be, Ooh. He would be so mad. We're gonna go to <laughs> Prague. <laughs> no, Listen, I'm down. Not. I'm down. I'll go. <laughs> so Prague. Let's go. <laughs> uh, it's not a beach, Mary. You can't go anyway. You live <laughs> in New York. I can go wherever I want. New York doesn't have airports. They have a bunch. And actually, the one closest to my that. house was just recently voted the best airport in the country. LaGuardia. Which one was that? LaGuardia. Because it's like brand new. They've oh, because they redid terminal. it. Yeah. yeah. LaGuardia used to be a used nightmare. To be a, oh, my God. Real hole awesome. back in the day. Yeah. I have never waited because it's like huge, dude. The way that, I mean, I've obviously never saw it before this, but I've never waited more than like five, maybe 10 minutes. To get through security, like it is a oh, breeze. LaGuardia so used to just be many lines. Awful. Well, well, I got to get there right now. The fast pass thing, right? The I have clear and the, pre-check, yeah. but a lot of the times the pre-check line is longer than the regular line. That's got that's a New York thing for sure. Because in Cleveland, anytime you, you fly, sail it, through. Yeah, it is. You know how mad it was when I flew out of Cleveland with Brian and Blake, and he refuses to get pre-check. Refuses. A waste of my money. He sounds like a ninety-year-old man. He'd rather waste, waste time money. than money. You can you can he, make more money. You can't make more time. He would he would rather do anything than waste money. Well, it's not even a waste of money. It's like, not a it's waste of money. Five yeah. years and he won't do it. He refuses to do it. So we're waiting in these stupid long lines, and I'm looking over at the pre-check line that's got three people. people Doesn't the line just through. make him mad? The line makes me mad. But doesn't it but, also make him mad? 
yeah, he gets frustrated. And but he's taken so long and this, that, and the other. He's right, chosen that, to be in that line. Yeah, and I'll tell him, well, you could have spent $75 and we wouldn't have to be in this line for the next five years. He did it so that you could get mad and then you would, be, you would give him the first class seat. Probably. It was, it was all along. Con- was, he didn't know I had been upgraded, though. I didn't tell him that until we got to the gate. He knew it was going to happen. We he fell knows, in. He, we, he knows you're a big shot. We have discovered the perfect way to travel. We flew to Orlando, but my in-laws drove. So what we did is we all packed Stole bags a couple of weeks ahead of time. And when my wife was visiting them, she took our luggage. And then they drove it down. Hmm. So when we flew, we just had backpacks on us. It was awesome. Yeah, but that's pre-check. I mean, what? How often is that actually going to happen? No, I know. What I'm saying (laughs) is, I mean, but that's like our spring break trip every year is with the in-laws down to Florida. Her Mm -hmm. dad rents a huge house or whatever. So I'm like, at least on that trip, because there's three of us going. It's not just me and Gwen traveling. You know, I'm like, that's how we're going to do it. They're gonna, we're gonna have them drive the luggage down. Now. I have to go get it from their house yeah. <laughs> next week, you know, when I go see my older daughter. But, but man, it was great. Because with the pre-check and you're not carrying anything or not waiting for anything to get checked, it was, oh, my God, from, like, curb to terminal. It was yeah. literally There's 10 minutes. To do. Yeah. Well, and that's the other thing is that I fly with United so often that I have, like, premier gold status with them. So my my first two checked bags are free. Whoever on my reservation gets two free checked bags, we get the um, Comfort Plus seating for free. So as long as Brian and Blake or whoever I'm traveling with is on the same reservation as me, they get access to all that stuff. Priority boarding, lounge access, all that. So they flew back from Phoenix to Cleveland, not on my reservation because I was going back to Indianapolis to do shows. So they had, he had to pay for his bag. He was in row, like, 28 and didn't have any access to, like, the lounges with free food and drinks and stuff at the airport. And he's like, dude, traveling like a poor person sucks. Like, this is the worst thing. I've, I was like, yeah, but the only reason why we get all those perks is because I have spent thousands and thousands of dollars. Like, that's the only reason why we're getting all these express treatments and everything like that. I just don't know why you would opt to stand in line if there was a way— it's not, like, it's not like you have to pay every time. You I've, pay for TSA me, pre-check. I have tried, and it's good for five years. I have tried every year we take two vacations where we fly, and I have tried every time to get him to get pre-check beforehand, and he won't do it. Hmm. He doesn't think it's worth it. Well, because he doesn't travel that much. Right, but it's good for five years. And my point is, even if you that's traveled— That's flights where you don't have to— That's You're saving right. yourself at least four or five hours. Right. And you don't have to mess with all the nonsense with the belts and the shoes. Are they still doing that in the regular lines, the belts and the shoes and all that crap? Depending on the airport that you're in, you don't have to take anything out. You don't have to take out your laptops. You don't have to take – and now, again, I I am going through pre-check more than regular screening. But there are some airports, like, uh, that they won't make you take your shoes off anymore, where they're like, yeah, you're fine with your shoes. Or you don't have to pull your laptop out. You just have to tell them which bag it's in Hmm. when you go through the general boarding. Hey everyone, hope you enjoyed the time off. This is uh, Eric from Penn Hills, Pennsylvania calling. I wanted to call to give Mary credit for something she said way back in 2022. Nope, this wasn't on one of the sum of shows from last week. I actually went back to some podcasts I missed back in 2022, specifically the day that you moved out of Oak Tree Boulevard. Now she said Hasbro, the game company, is it short for Has Brothers? You all laughed, <laughs> but she's actually pretty close. It's short for Hasenfeld Brothers. Just want to give her credit. Suck it. <laughs> what an <laughs> arcane bit of information. He was listening to a podcast from two years ago. Has brothers. Yeah. Well, you guys give crap like that all the time. How many times have we given Cody crap like that and it ends up being right? I know we don't have to do that anymore. It could be the Has brothers. You don't know anything. <laughs> well, no, it's funny on its face, but it turns out to be partially true. You know, the best comedy, Mary, and I know I don't have to tell you this, is rooted in truth. Yeah. A kernel of truth. Mary likes not just comics that lie, but magicians and the sort. Here's the thing, though. No. Uh, Because she doesn't want, this is why she doesn't like magic. We've learned, this is another piece of the puzzle. The reason she doesn't like magic is because she can't picture in her brain what's happening. The deception. She can't put a visual story together. That makes a lot more sense now. Of course. 
<laughs> they're also not talking you through their trick. Mm-hmm. They're just doing the trick. No, so a lot of them do talk you through picture. the trick. There wouldn't I mean, be anything for me to picture. Well, they don't. A lot of them narrate what's going on. Obviously, they're not going to reveal to you how they do it, but they're yeah, weaving. They? They're weaving a tale that goes with their illusion. The narration is the distraction. Mm-hmm. And then I feel dumb. Mm-hmm. Could be. All right. Well, that's all part of it. The next <laughs> Speaking album. of games, by the way, I read that Mattel. No, again, I don't quite understand this, but I, I do like the, the premise of it. Mattel is launching a new version of Scrabble, which they describe as less competitive. So are you a dummy? Do you not know a lot of words? You, you just play regular Scrabble if you don't know words and you... You just don't you're win. At, yeah, you're at the mercy of what letters you have anyway. So maybe they just want people to start buying Scrabble again, but I just like the way they put it. A less competitive version of Scrabble... I never think of Scrabble as a game that you're not playing unless you do have a pretty good vocabulary. I don't think there's a lot of dummies going to Scrabble. I've never played with someone who had a good vocabulary. Really? Then why play Scrabble? The fun is what how you're going to make these words with, huh? I went on a couple dates over COVID with a guy. One of them we played Scrabble, and he was horrendous. And I don't know if he lost on purpose. Uh, but that wasn't the move because I was like, you're an idiot. Like, he didn't put any any words that were longer than four letters. And then I've played with my niece. Well, you 12. are at the mercy of your tiles, so maybe he didn't have much to work with. I don't know about all that. Maybe uh, he had a Q and an X, you know, like high score letters, but uh, just not enough vowels. Maybe. I've played with my niece who's 12. <laughs> I haven't played Scrabble with many people. I used to play with Chad Daniels, and he was so goddamn good at it yeah oh i mean in person no, i'm, like I'm not we, talking like words okay. with friends or anything like no, we play like the scrabble game like the official scrabble game for a few years and it was just like every once in a while i'd beat him and i'd feel like the smartest person alive because he's in mensa so when i'd beat him it'd be like oh i should be a smart person sure and he's like oh no my son plays for like, oh, like don't let, don't he's burst my bubble tonight. yeah I'm he is see him in brooklyn Mattel says that the makers of Scrabble, I guess that's them, but their press release, Mattel found that the younger people, Gen Z, don't like the competitive nature of Scrabble. God bless you, Gen Z. You're all, I don't know what's going to happen to you, uh, but uh, I certainly hope it works out for you. Everybody wins games. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, new kind of Scrabble. Listen, you got to keep the, this is how these kinds of games last so long. Is they adapt and they morph to new generations. And that's what they're doing. Less competitive. I got a break here. I'm going to have those Better Than Ezra tickets for you. They are going on tour, getting ready to drop a new album. Uh, It's called Super Magic. It's going to be out uh, next week, I think. And they're going to play The House of Blues on May 16th. So if you dig those guys, I'll hook you up coming back. 35192. Text me for anything else, and we'll be back. It's the Ellen Park Show. Everywhere on our free iHeartRadio app or whatever smart device you have. Just tell me to play the Alan Cox Show on iHeartRadio. From the Universal Windows Direct Weather Center, WMMS Weather. There's a flood watch until 2 in the morning. Overnight, showers and thunderstorms down to 45. Rain tomorrow and 49. Sunny Saturday, high 57. Chance of rain again Sunday, high 70. This report is sponsored by Take 5 Car Wash. Take 5 Car Wash, the only car wash with the free Pro 5 Detail Center powered by Armor All Professional Products. Take your shine up a notch with powerful glass and interior sprays, high-quality microfiber towels, and professional vacuums. All free, all the time. Visit Take 5 Car Wash today. Hey guys, Sansbury here with the weather warming up a little bit more each and every day. And the weekend not all that far off. Time to start thinking about spending some time out on the lake, pulling some fish into the boat. Great way to relax. Rod in one hand, bush light in the other. And this feels like a perfect opportunity to remind you about the Bush Light Limited Edition Tackle Box Pack. Those packs will feature four different fish types on those cans. Crappie, catfish, bass, mahi-mahi too. Those Bush Light Tackle Box Packs are available from Bush Light throughout March and April. And you can pick up Bush Light fishing cans at a retailer near you. So no matter where your favorite fishing spot is, whether it be Ladue, Lake Erie, or maybe Atwood Lake, those Bush Light Tackle Box Packs are perfect for your fishing weekend. So relax this weekend, as I suggested, with a rod in one hand and a Bush Light in the other. 
Grab your Bush Light Tackle Box Pack at your local retailer featuring four different fish types on those cans. Crappie, catfish, bass, and mahi-mahi. Available from Bush Light throughout March and April. Please enjoy responsibly. Must be 21 or over. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis, Missouri. Tax Talk with Straight Talk. You give and you give. This tax season, you get with Straight Talk Wireless. You get a reliable 5G network and unlimited data and a Samsung Galaxy A14 included when you buy an extended silver unlimited plan. So you can give your janky phone to your kid. Yeah! Switch to Straight Talk. Find us at Walmart and straighttalk.com. For network management practices, visit straighttalk.com. Device offer ends 41424. Taxes and fees apply. WMMS and Miller Lite want you to have the ultimate Guardians game day. Just swing past any participating Giant Eagle locations, scan the QR code, and you could win a four-pack of tickets and be registered for the ultimate Guardians game day, which includes tickets to the game, food, and beverages from WMMS and Miller Lite. What's holding you back from learning the language you've always wanted to speak? Too hard. Takes too long. Not with Babbel. Babbel's lessons take just 10 minutes a day. 10 minutes isn't long. Nope, and they're fun. Fun isn't hard. Right. Babbel's interactive lessons, podcasts, games, and more make languages fun and engaging. You might even forget you're learning. And Babbel's lessons are built around real life. Babbel teaches language skills you'll actually use about travel, business, relationships, and more. You'll learn what matters most to you. Plus, Babbel's lessons are designed to get you having real conversations in as little as three weeks. Just three weeks? Even better. Since Babbel's lessons are voiced by real native speakers, you'll get pronunciation just right and be able to carry on conversations with confidence. Learning a language with Babbel doesn't take long. And with Babbel, it isn't hard. It's It's perfect. perfect. Get Babbel. It starts here. Go to Babbel.com to try for free. That's Babbel.com. B-A-B.
Local since 1937. The free iHeart Radio app has over 100 commercial free stations waiting for you to explore right now. Like Alt 2K. Don't wanna be an American idiot. A commercial free look back to alternative from the 2000s. With Foo Fighters, Weezer, Linkin Park, Green Day, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and more. Just open the free iHeartRadio app, search Alt 2K, and listen now. iHeartRadio, free, never sounded so good. iHeartRadio. It's time to give, time to give stuff away. No, it's time to give stuff away. All right, I'm going to go see Better Than Ezra. These guys are back on the road. They're getting ready to drop their latest album. It's called Super Magic. And it's going to be out, I think, next week. The 3rd, May 3rd, it's coming out. And a couple of weeks later, they will be here to uh, perform songs new and old for you. Better Than Ezra on the Live A Little Tour, Thursday, May 16th. A couple of weeks away at the House of Blues, Ticketmaster.com, with all of the details for you. Uh, A couple of tickets here for you. Want to go see Better Than Ezra? Call 10, 216-578-1007. Or 800 348 Are you trying to make us all uncomfortable? Colin Cox. It's gross. It's weird. It's not right. It's not cool. And there's plenty more where that came from. Back to the Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. And that bass right there in the front of the mix, too. So good. Yeah. Ah, that's the name of the song. Yeah. Good. Better than Ezra on the boat. Maybe I'm just too sure. Or maybe I'm just too frightened by the sound of it. Pieces of note fall down, but the letter said, Uh oh, in this girl. Alan, anybody who says they could never live in the country never has. I said the same my entire life until I did. I I grew up in the country, so I like being in the city, but I understand the appeal of just being out there by yourself. This person just moved back from a rural town in Oregon. Under 500 people. No stoplights. You could drive two hours in any direction without stopping. Yeah, it wasn't that rural. People are much more friendly. Well, my extended family were all rural people growing up, and I, you know, but they were like... It seemed like more, um, I don't know, they were doing rural things. I mean, I, I I liked being around, you know, people where there's stuff to do. And, you know, that's why people who are out in the sticks are, you know, there's this argument. Let me order my thoughts here. There was, because I was thinking about this this morning. There's some viral clip of some guy going around, as these frequently do. Some chode who's like, you know... If a girl says she didn't want to have kids, that's a huge red flag. She's selfish and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, dude, there's a billion other things to take your time when you're living in the city and around people. The reason people get knocked up in the sticks, they're doing the same thing. They're trying to create people around them because they're in the middle of nowhere. It just happens to be kids they have to clothe and feed. But they're doing the same thing. They're bored and they're trying to put people around them. They're just ejecting them from their own body. Well, and that's why small towns generally have horrible drug and crime problems, because there's nothing to do. None of those in the city. Well, but 13-year-olds start using drugs and stuff like that because there's there's literally nothing else to do. I mean, that's... I feel like in cities, not that there isn't teenage abuse problems, like as far as like drugs and alcohol go, but there's other activities for kids to do around the city. so much room for activities. (laughs) Yeah, but per capita, it might be the same. What kind of per capita? There are so many per capitas. It's uh, I don't have the figures in front of me, but depending on what you're talking about. You know, about. when you say per capita, there's many per capitas. It's like per capita relative to what? But you can look at just about any category, and we're really at the top, meaning positive, on a per capita basis. I guess all the people I know from super small towns are, like, bad. They were bad kids. They were the ones who were... 
you know, start well, what does fires, that mean, though? Oh, pyromaniacs and, doing and stuff. drugs and drinking well, alcohol and, uh, you know, stealing cars and stuff when they because there's nothing for else for them to do. There's no other outlets. And my girlfriend is from a small town and she did all sorts of dumb stuff Getting because pregnant. they were bored. Yeah. Yeah. Shooting and up she, fireworks, yeah. missing a leg. <laughs> and we, she, did, we, we did a lot of dumb stuff. She got pregnant. Is that what you said? No, she didn't. She was just oh, saying, she, she was saying in general. She she did eventually get pregnant, but not when she was a kid. She wasn't a teenage mother. Yeah, no. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. And I'm not saying that that can't exist in a city. I'm just not. I'm not a huge fan of try that of in a that small town. Rural living. Brian's from Chesterland. Okay? Yeah, he's Which out there. Not like it's not like a farm town, but there's a lot more room. And one of his biggest complaints is stoplights. That you could, I could go thirty minutes driving without having to stop. I'm like, what is imagine that? if your complaint is a stoplight. But here's my point: you don't have to drive thirty minutes to get to anything if you're in a bigger city. The only reason you're nostalgic about that is because that's how long it would take you to get to the grocery store. Right. You know what I mean? I'd yeah, but the time, but the time, central. but the time you are saving, and again, I'm Team City all the way. But the time you are saving not driving 30 minutes to get somewhere, you're still standing in line behind people, you're waiting. You might not be in a car, but you're still waiting to do stuff, right? You're in a city, there's more people. I don't know. All those people are are going to do the same things that you want to do because they're fun. I could definitely... Chesterland's a tiny town. I could never... I don't think I could... I'd blow my brains out, dude. If I was, like, having to live on a farm where my next neighbor is two miles away and you have to go into town for for provisions like absolutely not i'd probably end up going crazy well really you've like... always been anti-provision anyway i know you don't want anything provided you for do you. like a getaway though right i like okay. a getaway for like two or three days right but even yeah. then i would like if we're gonna go into like a mountain town or a cabin i mean i'm talking like maybe maybe a full weekend because then after that, I start to get frustrated when everything's closed at 6 p.m. And I'm like, well, we have to plan dinner at 2.30 in the afternoon if we want to do any kind of an activity today. Otherwise, everything's going to be closed and we won't be able to go to the grocery store or go get dinner or go do this or go have a drink and listen to music or, you know. You know what I like about Mary? Easy going. I'm, I've, you know what I learned about myself in sobriety? I am absolutely not. I know I you're thought, not. <laughs> when I was a drunk, I thought I was like the most chill, easy going, like go with the flow, whatever. And I was like, no, I was just hammered for a day. Why does anybody, and I, I don't know if you can answer this because it's kind of a vague question, but just jumping off what you just said there. Why does anybody think that they have a good handle on their personality when they're drunk all the time? Because it's all you know. You go, man, I thought I was this when I was drunk. I go, yes, but everyone else, including you, could tell you, well, that's because you're drunk. Once you get sober, you go, oh, this is me. I didn't know the difference. You get what I'm saying? Mm. I was drunk so often that now that I'm never drunk, I'm like, oh, no, 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 I'm not. Boy, I'd be angry if I could never drink either. I mean, I don't drink much. I'm not even angry. Eh, I'm just not as oh, uh, no, I'm just not as easygoing of a person. That's not part of my personality. Hmm. I'm a lot more type A than I ever thought that I was. And um, how has that worked against you? Um, see, this is a disagreement I've had with my therapist on multiple occasions. I don't know that it has. Oh. I think being organized and fickle on some matters and you know perfectionism can be a positive thing when I have been convinced trying to be convinced otherwise that it's actually a negative thing i guess i could let things go most of my family <laughs> fights wouldn't occur if i didn't yeah again <laughs> i i don't uh, i'm I, i'm very type a too but i don't understand the notion of not letting things go like you know when there's arguments with people like a significant other or something my, one of my f- it's always been the way i like to do it is I don't need to get the last word. When you get into an argument with a wife or a girlfriend or a boyfriend or husband, to me, the greatest thing is when you're going back and forth and you let them have the last word because it's reached this fever pitch and the last things hanging in the air are some awful thing they said to you and you just let them sit there and hang there. And that's it. You don't need to get the last word in. Now, I'm not talking about the moving on to the solving the problem. 
but I'm not a guy who needs a last word. I don't understand the notion of of not letting something go. For me, I because just what's need, the payoff? I need you to know that you're wrong. But and that doesn't admit, mean. But getting the last word doesn't mean they're wrong. I don't need to get the last word. I will talk to you until we come to some sort of. Uh, but they'll just resolution. give up. They won't That's be fine. But don't you want to? I, I, my thought what is, if, not if you want to get the last word, it's so that you can convince someone of your position. If no. they just give up, what's the payoff? I don't care about the last word. That has never been something I've cared about. Well, I'm not saying last be... word. You said I said, well, they'll just give up, and you go, that's fine. That is fine. You want to as wear long them as down. You understand that you're wrong. But they don't. They just give up. Well, it, to me, giving up is su- succeeding. No, no, no. no. You're, you're, you're giving up. You're bowing out. No, yeah, that's me giving up. Is saying th- I'm wrong. Have you convinced your MAGA brother of wrong. anything ever? Um, I have gotten him to say things like that makes sense, or I didn't see it that way. I'll never convince him that Planned Parenthood is a good place to for women's health care. But when I had to have like cervical cancer screenings done, and I explained how much cheaper it was. He was able to be like, okay, I didn't know that. But he would still never, like, do anything to help that company. Right. Hmm. Yeah, the whole, like, not letting things. But are you becoming less that way, do you think? About letting things go? Yeah. I'm trying to get better about not getting mad at people for the way that they are. (laughs) That's something I really, really struggle with. I get mad at people for the way they are. I'm serious. It's uh, a big problem in my life that I will, I will. Because a lot of people some, will get mad at us for the way we are. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get mad at people <laughs> in my life, and I know it's how they're going to react. I already know what they're going to say. I already know how the they're going to react to a situation. And instead of knowing it and being like, okay, let's prepare for this because we know it's coming, I'm like so mad because I wish they would react differently. That's so exhausting. It's very exhausting, and it's some. I it. need to. I, it's much, <laughs> much harder than you think that it is. Just, just stop no. I it. think it sounds really hard. It's very hard. Yeah, it's very, very hard. When I know exactly what how a waste the of energy is going to go, and I'll like talk to whoever in my life, and I'll be like, I know this is going to be a fight, or I know they're going to show it, it, and it'll be little stuff where it's like there's one person who's close in my life who is habitually thirty minutes late. At minimum. Well, that's rude. Any that's not a event. weird thing to be upset about. But it's been since day one. Since this person has been born, they have been late to everything. That's rude, And though. I know it's going to happen, yeah. and it bothers me every single time. Every single time that they show up late, I'm really frustrated and really aggravated. But I know it's going to happen, but that's inherently who they are. Why don't you show up late so you'll get there at the same time? Because that's not who I am. No, but, you they're not gonna, but you know you're going to be waiting. Why don't you tell them to be there at... I've done it. You've I've done tried that. to tell this and person. That, did it work? 30 minutes oh, prior. No. <laughs> Where, like, if dinner reservations are at 7, I'll tell them to be there at 6.15. Yeah. I'll get there at 6.45. Yep. They'll show up at 7.30. <laughs> An hour it's, and 15 dude, minutes I'm late. You, it's They're impossible. See, they see through you. They, it's you, impossible. You've zigged and they've zagged. See, this is the thing, like. I hate tardiness, man. Like, I, I'm, I'm also with that. Like, I like to be on time. I like to be, uh. Five I minutes early is on time, Bill. Yeah, on I, time is late. I don't like making people wait for anything. Like no. That's, that's very rude to me. But also, if someone is that frustrating to me, I just will be like, okay, I'm not going to keep going out of my way for this person. Well, this sounds like a family member, though. Yeah, yeah. even yeah. for that. I would just be like, yeah. Just, You're, I, see, I, I just don't. I'm not going to. If they're just annoying to be around, I, family <laughs> means nothing. It means something, but it doesn't you mean. Had nothing, doesn't you really had nothing know. to do it, with it. It doesn't mean that I'm going to keep having this person in my life and frustrate me. But you're not going to you're not going to prioritize a family member at all. Like you're not going to give your family special treatment. You feel I feel like you treat your family the same way you treat your friends, the same way you treat a stranger. Where it's like if you frustrate me three times, I'm never talking to you again regardless of how close we are. Not necessarily, cuz I still I mean uh, if that I like were the, the case, notion of that. Frustrate me thrice. I would never <laughs> talk to my from parents my again, but yeah. I I'm not I just I I have boundaries with people and I go, "Okay, I'm not going to go out of my way to keep trying to accommodate these certain things. And it's not like my my family's hard to deal with, but I also keep them at a, you know, like everybody, if, if people are going to make me mad, I'm just going to be like, oh, I'm not going to go out of my way to try and 
make okay, this person part of my life. Okay, what if something about like the way that they are as a person? Like Brian is a very particular. He has OCD. He's a very particular person. So I get. I wouldn't date Brian. I get super frustrated <laughs> when we are much to for, Brian's for, for a lot More reasons than just the OCD, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> when we're like doing things like getting ready to pack for a trip, yeah. I know he is incredibly particular about the way he needs to pack and how it, the process of it, and even to the point of how it looks inside the suitcase. It's a it's a series of you taking deep breaths, isn't it? It's a lot of me having to walk away. <laughs> yeah, I, because see, I'm that like, none do- of this matters. This that, does it does not matter what the inside of your suitcase looks like. That wouldn't bother me because that's him doing his own thing, and it, if if he's taking the time and doing it, and he still shows up on time. Yeah, right. I, I don't I don't care how he packs his yeah. bag, and I'd probably just be like, pack mine too. <laughs> hey, I don't. Where care. are my packing cubes, honey? Yeah, I, yeah. I'm a I'm a jam stuff in there. Yeah, he is. That would yeah. Me too. Yeah. That's so, like the whole thing of perfectionism is that you want everyone to do things the way that you do it because you think your way is the best. But why? Ninety percent of the time, it's not. But why? It, why? Why does the way other people do things like just do the things the way you want to and let other people do things the way they want? That's to? That's the whole problem with it. Right, but why don't you just listen to me? You're so because you're so annoying. <laughs> like this. Like this. Yes. I I almost did. I, dude, I had to stop myself because you do things like this, and I know you're gonna do it. I know you're gonna b- try to get under my skin over something stupid every day, mm-hmm. and I know better than to let it happen. <laughs> but you're so annoying and aggravating that it ends up happening anyway. And I'm like, why can't Bill just not be who he is? But, but why can't you just listen to me? But also, why wrong. not? What the, what no. happened? How am I wrong if I'm, if what I'm asking you to do is what you're trying to achieve? Because I don't want to hear it from you. But what, what I- happened? Oh, don't kill the messenger. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the message. Plus, it's the messenger. It. I already know it. So then just do it. But what happened? It from you. What happened to work smarter, not harder? What do you mean? Well, people that I don't necessarily think are all that bright or what you know, you can learn something from everybody that you can kind of apply to your own situation and go, wow, I, I would not have considered that. It's almost like they stumbled onto something amazing in their stupidity, and you go, oh, I can apply that somehow. It would have never occurred to me, but that's actually pretty interesting, rather than this is how I do it, this is how everybody should do it. Uh, I don't know, because I have a mental disorder. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Mm-hmm. I've tried, dude, and it's crazy to well, me. Well, a lot of people texting me agree with you. It's, it, I mean, when my therapist told me I had perfectionism and that it was detrimental to my life and uh, the reason why I'm so frustrated and on edge all the time. Um, and I told my family group chat that every single person was like, yeah, how did you not know this? Like, that's why you do A, B and C. That's why you're always all over us because of this, that or the other. That's why you're the one always planning the trips. And I'm like, where? Wh- I mean, I thought it was a, a good quality to have to be like, well, I would look at helping. Be. But it I can would be. Helping. But if you're the outlier. Then you're going to be the one that's kind of ostracized, even if another member of your family was exactly like you, exactly the way you wanted them to be. You would still be at odds with each other because you're the other one's not doing it the way they want them to do it. So it's like you're always just going to be somehow like ostracized from that group. Listen, it just sounds like it's exhausting. It's a problem, and I'm I'm the first person to say it's annoying, it's frustrating, it's aggravating, it's something that is incredibly hard to change. All of this energy that you could be focusing on your creativity, all of this energy you're throwing off on other crap that you simply cannot control. Yeah. Instead of funneling it to the one thing that's arguably the most important in your life. Well, but, I mean, I think that's a little, that's an oversimplification. Yeah, I'm sure it I, is. It's, it's that, not like. That's my I skill, take my, I can take my frustration from my brother and turn it into video editing. Like, that's not, I don't think that's exactly how that works. Well. It's like two different parts of your brain. Yeah, okay. You know but, what I mean? Uh, but like I still consider, no, but you can, I consider you can it waste, that, it's wasted energy. Yeah. I mean, it's. You oh, can relieve that I frustration. Agree. And that's, that's the goal that you're working on in therapy is trying to figure out how to. Not care about these things and how not how to put not it into to, practice how to, how to not project onto people and be like well do it this way this is the best way to do it why you know in in that's like you said very difficult to do you know it's some so people take Mary some people take out their frustrations uh, by masturbation you know I mean sometimes you just need to well, shut those it people are sinners <laughs> and disgusting <laughs> and she doesn't want to picture you doing it quite frankly. <laughs>
because she's picturing you doing it wrong. That might be another reason you don't like the picture. Yeah. <laughs> that might be it. <laughs> like, that's are... not how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you using French grip? <laughs> you got uh... to have one down and one up the top. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's definitely it's a counterclockwise circles. Yeah, putting it into practice and letting people do their own things. Where it's like, listen, this as much as I think this is negatively affecting me, it's not. At the end of the day, the way Brian packs the suitcase <laughs> does not negatively affect me. <laughs> now you're not bit. the suitcase in this situation, right? It's not. No. Oh, okay, good. If if he that's were, not how you pack my bag, Brian. If you were packing my bag incorrectly, then that would be a much bigger deal. Uh huh. That's never been an issue. Hey, we always welcome direction if we're doing something wrong in that uh, arena. Yeah. Well, so, listen, it's uh, as long as you feel you're moving in oh, a positive wanna, direction. Not that you need another example, but like little, little things will really aggravate me. Yeah, we got my it. Roommate, my roommate, when she wipes down the counter, she puts the towel hanging over top of the faucet head. So that way, oh. when you go to use the faucet head, the towel will get wet. Why don't you move? I have moved the it towel. every time I have ever walked into the kitchen. I take the towel and I fold it up and put it next to the sink. No, and no, every no. Every time I walk use back this, in, she use puts the fa- it back on top. Use the faucet. Put it back on the faucet. Why would I put it back on the faucet? Because that's where gonna she's gonna, gonna it, put it. I'm gonna have to take it off to use the faucet. <laughs> she turns the faucet on with the towel on top of it, and then I'm like, now oh, your towel's wet. <laughs> It's, oh. it's insane to me. Have you, have She's you getting towel it? debris in her water. I've asked her. I was like, why do you put the towel up there like that? And she's like, that's just like how I always did it. My mom did it that way. I've always done it like that. I was like, yeah, but then it's in the way when you want to use the why water. Why doesn't she use paper towel? I don't know, man. Throw it away. But every time I walk Who into the kitchen, stinky, I take stinky, nasty it off, towels in, mm-hmm. wet? Take it the... off, fold it next to it, and every time I come back 10 minutes later, it's hung right back over the top of the thing, and I'm like, whatever, we're just going to do this dance until one of us dies. Maybe you be... have a poltergeist, and it's not her. I'm pretty sure it's her. She just agrees with how the poltergeist is arranging your kitchen. <laughs> you know, it's a simple, simple solution for that. Live it in Cleveland where you can afford to live alone. Yeah! <laughs> That's how you do it. Oh, Bill hangs his wet towel wherever he wants. I hang the towels go on the towel rack on the oven. Like that's where they go. We have one there. That's yeah. for your hands. Yes. This is the the one that she wipes down like the counters with. Uh, I don't like I don't know I why don't, you'd put that. I don't I don't like to have a standing towel no. that you keep using to wipe down the counters. I don't use it. Yeah. I don't use it. She yeah. uses it. A mildewy it towel. Way. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, anyway. Good luck with all that. Mm-hmm. I'm on your side on that one. Hey, appreciate you. I got a break. 35192 on a text. You can watch live if you like at alancoxshow.com. The Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. And everywhere you go on our...
OhioHVAC.com for affordable professional service for your home. This is The Buzzard. From the Bath Authority Studios. 100.7 WMMS. Cleveland. Call the Alan Cox Show. Idiot. Stupid moron. 216-578-1007 or 1-800-348-1007. Zivon. Get people in the mood. Back when his uh, he was selling enough albums that his record company would give him a band. Last handful of times I saw him, it was just him and a piano and a guitar. You got to go out and tour and make money, but um, not going to pay for a band anymore. <laughs> just you and your abilities. Cavaliers and Guardians both grab wins last night, both off tonight. The Guardians beat the White Sox by one. Seven to six was the final, so they take two of three in that home opener series there. They will host the Yankees tomorrow night and Saturday at Progressive Field, whereas the Cavs will play the last two games of the regular season uh, tomorrow and Sunday against the Pacers and the Charlotte Hornets, respectively. Sunday at one is that final You'll hear those here on uh, MMS and on the iHeartRadio app. I assume, you know, once we get into Cavs-Guardians overlap season, sometimes it can get a little wonky uh, because there will be some ball games on TAM and some over here. But um, uh, you'll hear both of those Cavs games here, I believe. And then, of course, Saturday night, you know, we do a metal show here on MMS. If heavy metal That's runs through your veins. I'm sorry? That they're, what? What's it even called? <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. It's called Two Hours to Midnight. Okay, and this is a metal show, uh, but I bet you don't even play, like, different kinds of metal. Oh, we play all different kinds of metal. Okay, but I bet oh. you don't play any local metal. All local, so much local metal. I bet you don't have an email people can send <laughs> requests and submissions for their bands to be played on. That is true. We need to set up an email. I hadn't thought about that. I thought I had everything figured out, never got around to an email. Gotcha. It's 2htm at wmms.com. Oh, so you do have Of course. We post the playlists on our Facebook page, and we post the playlists on uh, wmms.com. Local bands this weekend, Voltan, uh, Like Tyrants, Convey the Signs, uh, some brand spanking new metal from a handful of bands. The reason I love doing the metal show is, even if you're a heavy metal fan, there's going to be a million bands that you've never heard of before. But they're going to have cool names, mm-hmm. and they're going to sound real cool. Nice, nice. And you might discover somebody brand new that you really dig. Well, that sounds fun. <laughs> and uh, so it's Saturday nights. I'm your host, along with Corey Roddick. Uh, less fun. And Pat Butler who I believe is another John Carroll University alumnus. Oh, look at that. We were talking about WJCU, a little nod to our brothers and sisters in broadcasting over there on the non-commercial side. Uh, but uh, WJCU is named the best college radio station in the country. And I believe um, our own Pat Butler might have matriculated. I don't, I don't know if he was at, on the station, but I think somebody told me that he did go to John Carroll. And so um, uh, that's a nice feather in their cap. 
Of course, Bill Peters has been doing a metal show over there for a long, long time on Friday evenings. But now, Buzzard's got one on Saturday nights. Good to know. So two hours to midnight. Yeah, we start at 10 and um, you know play stuff you want, stuff we like. And uh, it's a lot of fun. Well, we had Tom Green in here earlier. He had his rescue dog with him. He had Charlie and uh, neglected to mention that today was National Pet Day. And I, I, w- I hung out with my pet today, so that works out. <laughs> you did this yeah. morning? Yeah, we spent time together. Yeah. My dog kept waking me up last night, so I don't know if she ate something that didn't agree with her or what. She doesn't normally do that, and she kept waking me up. And I kept going downstairs to let her out. How does she do it? Does she go do some? Psst. Hey, yeah, wake up. That's exactly what she does. I I ate something bad. <laughs> yeah, she goes. I, I had something that. Um... Does she hit you with a? Psst. <laughs> or no? Hey, you a bitch. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's what I hear my dog saying. Mm-hmm. Uh, now I let her out, and then I wait. You know, because she knows if it's the middle of the night, she's not going to, in the broad daylight, if I let her out, when she comes back to the door, she'll bark to let me know she's done and I'll let her in. In the middle of the night, she has the wherewithal to realize, hey, it's pretty quiet. Let's not I'm bark. not going to bark. But as a result, if I'm not paying attention, she'll if I fall back asleep, she'll stand out there for a good long time. Whoa. And if it's chilly, that's no good. She will eventually bark. It's not like she'll be in any kind of danger. But So what I'll, what I'll do there is I'll stand there on the patio waiting until she's done and then bring her back in. But last night, boy, she was all over the place. A little clicky-clacky on the hardwood floors. I'm like, come on, man. I'm just trying to get some shut-eye here. Anyway, pet day. Now, pet sounds. Beach Boys classic. And uh, Disney Plus is putting out a Beach Boys documentary. And boy, have I tried to get into the Beach Boys. You don't enjoy the Beach Boys? I don't. Little and, good and vibrations? I don't think that it's, I mean, those are those are fine, quaint, kitschy songs. Mm-hmm. But, you know, musically, they're so highly regarded for what they did that I've really just from that aspect tried to appreciate what they did. And I could never figure it out. But again, Pet Sounds is considered one of these classic albums. And part of this documentary that they're dropping over on Disney Plus is this big competition they had with the Beatles back in the day. This is going to drop on May the 24th, by the way, if you are a Beach Boys fan. And we were talking about yesterday, I was talking about how April 10th, 1970 was the day that Paul McCartney told everyone the Beatles are done. Paul McCartney is in this Beach Boys documentary and always credits Brian Wilson's work on Pet Sounds for motivating him to make Sgt. Pepper. Now, uh, you know, to some people that might not have been good motivation, but they ended up being friends anyway. We ended up, it's kind of like a rivalry. The Beatles, bring them on. Here are the Beach Boys. If one group didn't have the other, would their music actually be what it became? Yeah, I could not get into the Beach Boys. I love Beach Boys. We just listened to it so much. We, I mean, it was was that on a lot in some music. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We there was no Beach Boys. I mean, my mom was way into the Beatles, but there was no Beach Boys there. Back in the USSR was Paul McCartney's Mm -hmm. kind of dig at California girls. That was not dig. It was like more tongue in cheek, but. Yeah, I, as much as I've listened to Pet Sounds, people are like, oh, it's this revolutionary, bleh. I'm like, man, I could not get into it. Because I think of Kokomo, and, I mean, it's all feel-good music, but to me yeah. the Beach Boys were like, you know, they were in the same vein as Jimmy Buffett. I mean, Which I've, is blasphemy I've never, to people who like the Beach Boys. Right. I've but. never listened to Beach Boys and had those moments that people talk about because it was always just, like it's, I, I can't remember the first time I heard the Beach Boys. Yeah, I can't differentiate between any of the albums because they all kind of ran together. Because we just would listen to usually greatest hits albums or whatever. Uh, my dad was big on that. He's like, why would I buy all the albums where I can get the greatest hits? <laughs> and those are the songs I listen to. It says on the cover, these are the greatest yeah. hits that they've oh, ever done. That sounds. And what if there's a song I don't want to hear? Right. I want to hear all the hits. Some 
also not a lot of variety. Well, that's what I, you mean in the sound of their songs. Yeah, I mean, they yeah, are. it was very much of the time. I yeah. mean, I get it. It was surf music, and it was, you know. But Pet Sounds was Wouldn't It Be Nice and yeah. Sloop John B and God Only Knows. Great, great the, songs. All, all huge, great huge songs, songs yeah. you know. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> in My Room. Kennison, we were talking about him yesterday. He used to do a bit about the Beach Boys and In My Room. I think maybe it was too wholesome for me. Yeah? I mean, I mean I, it could it, be, yeah. yeah. I mean, it is really... You're not getting horny listening to the Beach Boys. <laughs> oh, no! Is it, wouldn't it be nice about two people abstaining from sex? Probably. Like, it's yeah. nice. It, wouldn't it be great if we were older yeah. and we could hang out and take our pants off? Isn't that what that was about? Wouldn't it be nice is my breakup song. What do you mean your breakup song? That's a... Uh, wouldn't it be nice if we could break up? Because, well, the butthole girl, when yeah. her and I broke up, I'd always joke about how that's the song that Adam Sandler would sing in 50 First Dates because that was their oh, song. Oh, I never saw that. And so he'd, he'd sing it while he was crying. He's like, wouldn't it be nice? <laughs> and I was like, oh, if you ever break up with me, just give me that album and I'll know we're done. And then there was that day when I came home and she had taken all her stuff out and she left me that album. And I was like, oh, we're breaking up. Oh, that was her signal? Yeah. She didn't tell you verbally? No, that's how she broke up with me. But then we ended up getting back together, and then I broke up with her a much more a sophisticated spite. way with a text message. <laughs> yeah. So, and I don't think I was, I wasn't, I was suggesting that we should. I so said, she's like, I'm out of here and left you she the Beach Boys. The, yeah, yeah. And so I was like, oh, that's, that's a bummer. And then, uh. We ended up getting back together, and then I uh, broke up with her, and I just said, I think we should break up in a text message. I didn't think that was us breaking up. I thought that was us starting the conversation I about see. it, but I see. she took it as, oh, you broke up with me in a text message. So I guess I did. Well, to me, the funny thing about Pet Sounds was that was supposed to be their experimental album, right? right. And it that's sounds what, like all the other Yes, crap. that's yeah. when Brian Wilson discovered Pot, yeah. and he was getting into like, I'm like, that's what you got. All the other bands that were into weed in the 60s and psychedelics were cranking. You might not have liked it, but they were cranking out very, um, very, very experimental records. Beach Boys, this guy finds Pot, and clearly, I don't know. I know there are people who will go hard on Beach Boys and musicologists and stuff. I just never heard it. Yeah, I, I don't I don't go that deep with Beach Boys. I just, I mean, it's just a lot of nostalgia and just, you know, they're catchy, fun songs to listen to. They're not something I listen to on a regular basis, but I'll throw them on a summer playlist every once in a while. I wonder what album my mom had, because I don't think she had Beach Boys, but I do remember God Only Knows being on in the house. So I wonder if she had, I wonder if she had Pet Sounds or if she had like a Greatest Hits or something. Maybe. I remember this song being on when I was a kid. Man. But like Surfing USA and all that crap, that wasn't on in our house. I don't remember that at all. Fun, fun, fun. Maybe she had a best of. I mean, my mom was 25. No. My mom was like a teenager when this came out. So they probably mailed it to you when you were a teenager in the 60s. So I remember this. But a lot of people covered these songs, too. So maybe I was listening to the covers, like the Carpenters or some crap. I bet your parents listened to the Carpenters. Uh, I mean, again, my mom, my mom wasn't like a music person. So. Right. Anything she she was more into music when she was younger. My dad, yeah, he was he was kind of the Carpenters, but then he liked a lot of singer songwriter stuff, a little more folky stuff mm. than Woody Guthrie. Uh, I mean, this machine kills fascists. No, not quite that. <laughs> I mean, was Your dad like, was he wasn't a super no, hardcore no, I, lefty no, when no. he was a <laughs> younger man. No, he was not. Oh boy. No, just uh, Gordon Lightfoot. Yeah, John, John Denver. Yeah, yeah. James Taylor was probably is probably about as uh, far left as he would go. No, all right, well, right. Don James, Henley, he likes yeah. Don Henley. Don Henley solo, yeah. mm -hmm. building the perfect beast. 
I don't Sunset know. Grill? Did he go with him well into the 80s? Wow. All right. I don't know what he had when he was All younger. All she wants to do is dance. I mean, Don Henley didn't go solo until like the early 80s. But I, I just I just know. I don't know what he was listening to when he was younger. I just knew the CDs he had when he started buying CDs. And Don Henley, again, all greatest hits albums. Because he's like, I just want to hear the hits. Of course. He's a hits guy. Yeah, I get it. I was watching a thing, uh, uh, Jelly Roll. We were talking about him because we played that song in MMS. But he's a country artist. He's got a couple of crossover songs. Um, but uh, he's another guy who, like, tried to be a rapper, but it didn't work. So you do a hard pivot to country. And, you know, you're kind of talking to the same crowd anyway. Work for Kid Rock. And he was talking about how he had a chance to meet Diddy. And for some reason, he did not. <laughs> and he's probably very happy about making that decision. Well, yeah, he said he had a... A feeling, right? Like yeah, he had a was, feeling. Yeah. yeah, he's like, hey, they were like, you know. I did Kimmel the day Diddy did Kimmel. This is the first time in my career where they said, do you want to meet such and such? And I said, yeah, and I started walking that way. And as I was getting down the hallway, this is a true story. I said, nah, and went and got back in the car. Just like, I don't know. It is just something like very seldom does things rub me in a way where I was like, I don't even know if that's a picture I want. <laughs> Talk about bullet ducked. Yeah, but I mean, it's not like Diddy was going to do anything as they're meeting in a dressing room. We don't know what Diddy was going to do. I don't think Diddy would. You don't think I, that he would have tried I to traffic Diddy, Jelly Roll? I don't I, I don't think he had the capacity. <laughs> he didn't have a hand truck? Yeah. Well, listen, Jelly Roll is a very, uh, you know, now he's become quite a prominent artist. Right. Maybe, I don't... maybe Diddy still thought he was going to bring the guy back into the rap community. We should collab. Yeah. I got an idea for an update on the Godzilla song I did, and I want you to sing on it with me. <laughs> I'm going to get Jimmy Page back, and we're going to do it. You're going to play Godzilla. <laughs> Sean Diddy Combs. Yeah. So, well, there you go. Jelly Roll seems like a nice guy. Uh, who knows what's going to happen with um, Puffy. Ugh. I got a break here. I uh, want to get the last word in. Send me a text, 35192. And uh, you're going to get the Corey Roddick experience tonight, I believe. Cavs, Guardians, both off. You're going to be in good shape. We'll come back after these. The Alan Cox Show. On our free iHeartRadio app and your favorite smart device. Just tell it to play The Alan Cox Show on iHeartRadio. Our 2024 iHeartRadio Music Awards. Streaming now on Hulu. Find out what the winners had to say. Ladies and gentlemen. iHeart Innovator Award recipient, Beyonce. Innovation starts with a dream, but then you have to execute that dream, and that road can be very bumpy. Best new artist, Jelly Roll. To be the best new country artist and the best new pop artist. You don't know what this means to a kid like me. Multi-award winner, SZA. We didn't succumb to the pressure of needing to have the perfect writers, the perfect producers. We just did us. I heart icon, share. From my own experience, if you have a dream and you stick with